Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku became the world's number one hero part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story The Hinakami from Wattpad. So let's start the video. Izuku was walking towards UA since today would be the first day back after the internships. The internship was strange in light terms. Flashback, Lita attempted to go after the hero killer in Hosu and I had warned Gran Tornio about the possibility of him doing this. As such, since I already had some control of one for all, OFA, he decided that we would spend the internship stalking Lita and his mentor in Hosu to ensure that he didn't get himself killed. We couldn't really warn other heroes about what he was going to do since Izuku had no proof. While they were in Hosu, Nomas appeared and started to destroy the city. As such, Izuku was sent to follow Lita to ensure his life while Gran Tornio helped in the city. The hero killer approved of the hero known as Deku since he came and only wanted to save the other people first and was meddling in other people's business like All Might told him to. As such, Izuku was able to defeat Stain and save everyone. No Shoto this time since Izuku had very better control of OFA. Lita got in trouble with the police but was let off with a slap on the wrist and told not to do it again. Izuku's involvement was covered up even though he had permission, this is due to his age and any villains that may target him due to taking Stain down. As such, Gran Tornio was given credit since the wounds can be credited to him. Flashback end, Izuku arrived at UA and was walking through the halls. However, he felt off once he got into UA due to the fact that people were looking in his direction far more than normal and looked away when he looked in their direction. He first thought it was about Stain, but that was covered up. Soon Izuku would learn the truth on why everyone was looking at him and it wasn't for a good reason. Izuku POV, why is everyone looking at me today? They shouldn't know about the Stain capture unless Lita talked about it. When I arrived at the class, I entered and saw that everyone was staring at me for some reason. Then it happened, everyone started accusing me of being a bully for some unknown reason. Eurarika, Deku why the hell did you bully quirkless kids when you were in middle school? Was all this personality of yours a lie? Kurishima, not manly dude, not manly at all. Ashido, I hate people like you who bully others just because they are different. While this is going on, I am having an internal crisis inside since I have no idea what they are talking about. For the love of God, I was quirkless before OFA so why would I bully another quirkless kid who could have been my friend? Then I saw it, I looked over and saw the smirk on Katsuki, Kaken, Bakugo face. I knew he hated me all these years and the fact that I got into UA with him, but I didn't think he would lie about this when he was the one that bullied me. Almost everyone in the class was yelling at me besides a few like Koda and Shinso. They looked confused about what everyone was talking about since those two knew I was a late bloomer since I've told them about that. Intercom Mizu, could Izuku Midoriya please come to the staff room, I repeat Izuku Midoriya to the staff room. Well crude, looks like the rumors have reached the teachers. At least All Might will be on my side since he knows I was born quirkless. RDPOV, staff room Izuku arrived at the staff room where All Might, Nizu, Aizawa were waiting for him with the police detective Tsukachi. The fact that the detective was there for this meeting concerned Izuku but also relieved him since the detective could prove the rumors false. Aizawa, problem child, do you know why we called you here? Izuku, I'm assuming about the things I got accused of when I walked into the class just a few moments ago. Aizawa, correct. UA has a zero-tolerance policy regarding bullying and you shouldn't have been allowed to attend UA based on your records that I've just gone over. Aizawa does not know about him being a late bloomer and this is the first time he has looked over the files since he wants to be bias-free. Izuku, the rumors are false and my record is biased against me. Aizawa, then why has Bakugo confirmed the rumors about, detective, I think that enough Aizawa. My quirk is confirming his statement so the rumors are false and the file is biased. Aizawa, how are they biased? They are his official file. Izuku then explains the fact that he is a late bloomer and the fact that he has had his quirk for only less than a year to Aizawa. 
This the teacher off since he has been lied to by Bakugo about the bullying. Izuku then explains the fact that he was the one being bullied by Bakugo instead since he was the quirkless student. This is confirmed by the detective and the staff in the room are horrified about Izuku's life. Aizawa, I want to expel Bakugo for lying about this whole thing and spreading the rumor. Niza starts the, he is cut off by Izuku. Izuku, actually, let him stay since you are the only teachers that will fix him and the chance he would become a villain due to his ego and personality. Also, I might not be attending UA anymore, so there is less of a point since I wouldn't be with any of the class that betrayed my trust and believed in the rumors. This surprises All Might, Nizu, Aizawa, and Tsukachi since Izuku has always wanted to be a hero. All Might, but my boy. Why would you stop being a hero? Is it due to your class? Nizu, this is bad, all for one is still around, we cannot lose the boy. Izuku, can you please explain why you would be leaving UA? Izuku, all might, I'm not giving up on being a hero. It's actually due to the fact that mom wants to move to America to be with dad and they asked me if I wanted to either go with them or stay here. If I stayed, they wanted to know if you would take guardianship over me all might since you're my second father figure. All might, I would be glad to take care of you, my boy. We can get started on the Izuku. Sorry All Might, but I was on the fence before I arrived at UA. However, with the class reactions, I decided that I would rather go to America to be with them and I would attempt to attend the UA school there that is ranked the hashtag hero school in the world. All Might, I, I understand him, my boy I just am disappointed in the class since they are meant to be training to be heroes. I believe we could ensure you get into the hashtag school with a letter of recommendation from Nizu or myself since we do have some favors we can pull. Nizu, indeed, I will call them now and have the paperwork started. Do you know when you will be leaving Japan? At least he still wants to be a hero and will be going to a sister school, Nizu thought. Izuku, I would be leaving at the end of this week since that is when mom plans to leave. I need to let her know so she can start planning the travel arrangements. Aizawa, problem chi, Midoriya, I wish you the best of luck in America. After you are done talking to All Might and Nizu, go ahead and go home for the rest of the week since there's no point in staying for the stuff we have planned. It will be better that you get everything ready to leave. He hugs Midoriya it was a pleasure having you in my class. Please stay in touch with the staff here at UA. Izuku, thanks sensei, could you send me Shinso and Koda since they are the only ones that didn't believe in the rumor. Aizawa, sure thing kid. Leave staff room Izuku then spends the rest of the time with All Might, Nizu, and Tsukachi. All Might asked Nizu for several weeks off so that he could accompany Izuku to America and take care of any matters at the other UA to ensure that Izuku is enrolled and to also spend some time with Izuku's family since he is close with them. Nizu approves since it will stop All Might from overextending himself and All Might will take Izuku and Inko on his private plane to America to avoid other people. Izuku is left alone in the room waiting for Shinso and Koda. They arrive and Izuku talks to them about him leaving to go live in America. They are disappointed due to the class actions and will miss Izuku. Izuku had told the teachers and both of them not to inform the class about him leaving. He wanted to let them think whatever they wanted. The staff had decided to start letting other classes know that Izuku was proven innocent in regards to the rumors via a lie detector quirk so that class, a besides Koda and Shinso would start getting pressured by the other students. Time skipped to the end of the week, Izuku POV, my mom, All Might, and I, Inko and Hisashi know about the skinny form and OFA, are boarding All Might's private plan and are setting off to fly to America. Well, goodbye Japan and here I come America. I hope I can make new friends in America. The flight didn't take that long since we didn't have to make any stops for other passengers and or refuel since All Might's plane can do several trips to America from Japan without refueling. Once we had successfully landed at the private airport, we started to do stretches and relax our bodies since we couldn't do much physical movement. The pilot of the plane had alerted All Might that Izuku's father would be arriving to pick them all up any moment and we just needed to relax until then. As such, All Might and Izuku talked about his current progress of OFA and how they were going to keep All Might up to date with Izuku's current situation while in America. Soon several cars pulled up and out came Hisashi Midoriya. 
Name, Hisashi Midoriya Sexuality, Straight Love Interest, Inko Midoriya, Wife, Group, Pro Hero Hashtag Quirk, Fire Salamander Description, This quirk grants the user the ability to fire highly pressurized jets of fire from his mouth and gives the user pyrokinesis. This allows the user control of their own fire and may control other fires. Controlling a fire that wasn't created by the user will take extra energy to control the said fire. Drawbacks, user can lose their own body heat due to producing fire from their own body. This can be overcome by support gear to heat the user's body up. Controlling a fire that wasn't created by the user will take extra energy to control the said fire. Hero name, salamander hero name, salamander Izuku POV, after father talked with the rest of us for a few minutes, we decided to go ahead and head to the family home here in America. It has been a long time since I was at the family home. Mother and I had to leave America when I was younger since villains would have gone after me if they knew about our connection. Not even the Bequegos back in Japan knew about my and mother's connection to the Spitfires company since we never talked about it. The family main home looked like this. The family main home looked like this, overall, the house was large and allowed us to host a large number of guests whenever we needed to. We also had a separate living house that was not connected to the main building where my father said I would live so that I could have my own privacy and do with it as I wish. Main building living room, second private family living room, second private family living room, second private family living room, kitchen, underground gym, underground gym, underground home movie theater, underground home movie theater, underground home movie theater, Izuka's detached living area, Izuka's detached living area, private study, private study, Izuka's room, Izuka's room, game room, game room, RDPOV, with everyone settling in, they all started to eat dinner and talked about when. Izuku would start going to the UA Hero School nearby. All Might told the Midorias that he had a meeting scheduled at the UA to ensure all the paperwork would be completed and find out class information for Izuku in two days. All Might suspected that Izuku would start attending the school by the start of next week. They arrived in America on Tuesday, since it would also be the day before All Might would have to return to Japan. All Might had promised them that he would stay in touch and come visit every few months if he is allowed the time off. This would let All Might personal time with his successor and the rest of the family since he would have to do most of his communication via phone calls or video calls now. All Might, thank you for everything that you have done for me, said Izuku. All Might was so happy that he had Izuku as his successor, the boy was so kind and pure-hearted. No problem, my boy, said All Might. Time skip day of All Might's meeting, All Might told them that he would be going to the meeting at the American UA at noon and would be back later in the day after he had taken care of everything. Izuka decided that he would go out shopping for some new clothing since his former clothing didn't really suit him anymore. Izuka no longer cared to be as nice as he was before and would be a bit more outgoing in his outfits and how he acted. As such, he went shopping at the local mall. However, what he didn't realize is that this trip would start to change his life forever. Izuka POV Local Mall Well, time to start changing up my look since I will be living in America from now on. Izuka mumbled out, Well, time to start changing up my look since I will be living in America from now on. Izuka mumbled out. Behind Izuku were three girls, one with red hair and eyes and another with white hair and eyes and last was a girl with black hair and yellow eyes. They decided to approach him since they overheard him talking about changing up his looks since he was new to America. Hey, we overheard you talking to yourself about changing up your looks. Do you mind if we help you out since we like to shop for new clothing and styles, said the red hair girl. Izuku was shocked since he thought he said that stuff in his mind and didn't know he mumbled it out for others to hear. Oh 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 sure. Sorry, I am new to America and will be living here for the foreseeable future since my mother and I moved to be with my father. Izuku said to the two girls. By the way, our names are Skylar Baker, Rose Harrison, and Sophia Jones. What is your name, said the white-haired girl was now known as Rose. Midoriya Aizu, sorry, Izuku Midoriya, I almost forgot you go by the first name here in America instead of the last name like in Japan. Nice to meet you Skylar, Rose, and Sophia. Izuku said cheerfully. The four of them started going around different shops and put together a few different styles of clothing for Izuku. 
The four of them started going around different shops and put together a few different styles of clothing for Izuku, thank you for the help in picking new outfits out Skylar and Rose, said Izuku, thank you for the help in picking new outfits out Skylar and Rose, said Izuku. No problem Izuku, Rose, Skylar, Sophia said. However, their fun and excitement were ruined by some thugs that decided to try and hit on the girls. Hey ladies how about you ditch this nerd and come with us, thugs yeah, we can show you a good time starts putting his hands near the girls' bodies, thug, how about you all screw off before I break your bones, said Izuku while sending a death glare to the group of thugs. They don't want to go with you and they won't be so back off, said Izuku as he stepped in front of the girls. How about you screw off yourself kid? Said the thugs, while one pulled a bladed weapon out of his jacket and started to attack Izuku. Izuku then moved quickly and disarmed the thug while breaking his hand forcing him to drop the knife. Skylar. Please call for police so they can arrest these thugs. Yelled Izuku. Time skip hours, RDPOV, Skylar, Rose, Sophia, and Izuku were sitting around and relaxing for a few minutes since they finally got done being questioned by all the police and giving their statements. Most of the time consumption came from the fact that Izuku was new to America and the police wanted to ensure that he was informed of several laws in regards to quirk use so that he would know in the future since he told them he came from Japan. Turns out in America, you can defend yourself and others with your quirk unlike in Japan which has tougher quirk laws. Though Izuku didn't need to use his quirk, the police did give him the information for future use. But did tell him that he would be held responsible for any damage and wounds he caused if he was found at fault for any situation he finds himself in the future. Well, this became a long shopping trip. Said Izuku. Yes it did, agreed the girls. It was nice meeting you girls and I hope we will meet again but I need to go home. My family is most likely wondering where I am since I was gone longer than I said I would be. Said Izuku. They all said their goodbyes to each other and Izuku started to leave however, he bumped into several guys and caused everyone to fall on the ground. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Let me help you guys up. Izuku said while Skylar and Rose were giggling in the background and Sophia looked like she wanted to laugh at them. Izuku offered each of them a hand and had helped them off before saying sorry again and running off since he needed to get home. However, what he didn't realize was that after he started to leave the two guys started to have a burning sensation across their bodies. Izuku himself had a burning situation across his body but he didn't realize it since he had powered OFA on for a few moments to help him get a running start. Rose P.O. with Lucas, Alex. Why does it seem like you two are in a bit of pain? The fall to the ground shouldn't have hurt that much. I asked. They didn't know why they were in pain either. That was until Alex rolled up his sleeve and saw his dragon mark which represented his connection to his main soulmate that he hasn't found. It had changed a bit and now had a shade of green on it. Then Lucas looked at his phoenix mark and saw that the fire around it had a tint of green around it as well. These marks on their body would only change when they had found their main soulmate. Both Lucas and Alex are connected as soulmates but not as really each other's main one. They needed the main individual in the group who they were connected to and it seems it was Izuku. Well isn't that interesting? Lucas and Alex attempted to find Izuku but he was already gone. This made them both really sad since they had let their soul mate out of their hands when they had just found him. They asked me and Skylar if we knew him and we had told them how our day went and Izuku's name. Sophia found the situation funny since those two have been trying to find their soul mate for so long. She has a bit of a sadistic side in her when it comes to others' pain. Though she doesn't show it much with our group since she cares for us, she does enjoy a good laugh sometimes at our expense. We also mentioned that Izuku had said that he just moved to America and would be attending a hero school here soon. This made Sophia look stunned for a second and had let us all know that she heard from our homeroom teacher that we have a new student starting in our class next week. From the description given, it did match Izuku a bit. Now we can only wait and see if the new student is indeed Izuku, I wonder how he will take having two soulmates. I also wonder when he will notice the changes to his body Izuku arrived home from the mall and was questioned by his family on why he took so long. 
Izuku explained how he got help from two girls on his shopping trip which turned into a mess at the end when he dealt with a group of thugs and had to listen to the police explain the differences in quirk laws between Japan and America since they found out he was new to the country. He also explained that he ran into several guys on his way out and had to apologize before he ran off to come home. All Might found the situation funny. Leave it to my boy to go on a shipping trip and run into criminals. You really are a problem child like Aizawa said, aren't you? Aha, said All Might. Izuku didn't find this funny since he wanted a fresh start from being involved in villains battles non-stop like in Japan due to the USJ and Stain incident. All Might did inform Izuku that all the paperwork for his enrollment in the school is completed and his new hero costume will be completed before he starts school. Izuku decided to change his hero outfit at the request of his father since he was getting a new start. After eating dinner with the entire family, Izuku decided to go take a shower. This is where he will find some of the changes to his body that he didn't notice until now. He found two marks, one a black dragon on his left bicep and a red phoenix on his right bicep. This caused Izuku to freak out which alerted his family about something being wrong. My boy is something Ro son is something the mat sweetie what hap all might Hisashi Inko paused as they saw Izuku arms. My boy when did you get those? All Might asked Izuku since both other parents are currently still frozen. I didn't. I don't know where these came from since I didn't have them before I left for the mall. Is it possible it has something to do with OFA All Might? Izuku was freaking out as he said this. The others became unfrozen at this point and were wondering the same thing. I'm afraid it isn't. Though not everything is known about OFA, none of the previous wielders passed on anything that referenced this. We know all for one created OFA, and previous users pass an echo of themselves as vestiges and increase the power of OFA. Nothing like this was mentioned. All Might was dumbfounded due to the marks. The family spent several hours that night trying to figure anything out regarding the marks, but they couldn't figure them it. It was a mark of a dragon and a phoenix and didn't have anything to do with OFA as far as they know. They assumed that the men that Izuku knocked over quirks went off and gave Izuku some new body ink without either party realizing it. As such, unless something changes they decided to leave it alone. Time skip day of the new school, day left before All Might left, it was decided that All Might would take Izuku to school in his skinny form since he is registered as a guardian for Izuku. They didn't want the fact that Izuku was Hisashi's son to get out to the general public for now and decided to wait as long as they can before revealing this fact since Izuku would be targeted by any criminals after his father. All Might and Izuku headed to the school so Izuku could meet the principal, who does know about All Might's skinny form, All Might have connections to this school due to his time in America, and get his school schedule and meet the person responsible for showing him. Around the school Principal office as Izuku and All Might arrived, some students looked at them funny since it was in the middle of a term and he was transferring in. However, they all decided to leave it alone and went to class. Izuku and All Might knocked on the door to the principal's office and were called in. Hello, Yagi and you must be Izuku. Welcome to the UA of America. We pride ourselves on the fact that we are the hashtag hero school of America and also the world. Welcome to UA said Principal Victor welcome to UA. Said Principal Victor, thank you for having Principal Victor. I hope I can live up to the expectations that my family has for me. Said Izuku. They all sat down and discussed some matters and were waiting for the student who would show Izuku around the school to arrive since Izuku and All Might arrived early to talk to the principal about any lingering matters. They talked for about another half an hour before someone knocked on the door. Victor called the person inside and it turned out that the person that would be showing Izuku around would be Sophia who Izuku had already talked with before. Izuku introduced himself again and introduced All Might to Sophia. Tosh, this is Sophia from the mall where I met her and two other girls that helped me pick out outfits. Said Izuku. Well, it's nice to meet you, Sophia, you can call me Mr. Yagi or Tosh if you wish. I am one of Izuku's guardians since his parents couldn't bring him here today. All Might said, well, it's good that you two know each other. Izuku, Sophia is one of the top students here at UA and will be showing you around. Sophia, please take him around campus and then to class. 
He has the same classes as you do, stated Principal Victor. Izuku said goodbye to All Might and the principal and walked off with Sophia who said she would show her around and introduce her to her friend group which was the other girls from the mall and the two guys he ran into. Izuku at this point has forgotten about the marks on his body and forgot to ask her if one of them had a tattoo quirk. As such, Sophia showed Izuku some parts of the campus. Mani building, inside the main building, classroom locates inside the main building, classroom locates inside the main building, classroom locates main mess hall, main mess hall, grand library, cityscape, large training grounds like UA in Japan cityscape, large training grounds like UA in Japan cityscape, large training grounds like UA in Japan combat training grounds, combat training grounds, classrooms, classrooms. Sophia showed a good portion of the campus to Izuku but focused on more important parts. She explained to him that the school had a different style of buildings for different areas and was more tech improved in other areas. It all depended on what was needed to improve training and learning. As such, the combat grounds were an open pit area that looked very old school compared to the classrooms since they served different needs. Sophia then took Izuku to homeroom since they got done with the tour faster than they thought and would be able to make it to homeroom on time. I wonder how Lucas and Alex will react when they see Izuku and we will be able to confirm if he is indeed their soulmate later today, thought Sophia. RDPOV, class, a homeroom, everyone was starting to show up in the classroom and getting ready for the start of the day. In one area of the class, you see individuals sitting together who are wondering where the TH person of the group is at. Hey does anyone know where Sophia is at? It's not like her to be late and she didn't say anything about not coming today, asked Rose. None of the group knew where she was and she didn't message any of them either. As such, they were starting to get worried. Alright everyone sit down and let's me talk. I have a few things to talk about before we start. Today we will be getting a new classmate that will be starting here. They came in on high recommendations from people that couldn't be ignored. As such, instead of starting next semester, they will start now and catch up with everyone else. Sophia is currently guiding them around the school and will bring them here later. Said the homeroom teacher named James who was a pro hero, quirk, human spider, description, grants users multi-arms that can produce spider thread that can stick, swing, and grab things with. Picture from Deviant Art, Ringaline, Picture from Deviant Art, Ringaline, the homeroom teacher answered the group question but also made everyone else in the class gossip since no one in the main group really interacts with others unless it's for class. The group doesn't have a name to it but currently, we are some of the strongest students in the school currently thought the small group. While our homeroom teacher was still talking, the classroom door opened and Sophia and the new student was there. The group from the mall recognized who the new student was, it was Izuku. Alex and Lucas were freaking out inside since they wanted to know if he was indeed their soulmate. They needed to know but didn't want to scare Izuku off if he was the missing person. Izuku POV, Sophia had finished leading me to our homeroom. She told me she would introduce me to her friends which were all the top students in the class and their school year. She also told me that it was the other girls and the two guys I knocked over at the mall. That was embarrassing to know and Izuku had asked her if they were mad at him for that. She responded to him that no and they were likely happy to be knocked off their feet by a handsome guy like Izuku since both of them are gay. This made Izuku blush strong since he did find them attractive but still he had some self-doubt inside due to being bullied in the past and how he was treated before he left Japan. Sophia started to giggle at him since he was blushing strong. God please Izuku. I really hope you are their soulmate, thought Sophia. Let's go inside, the teacher should be about done with announcements, stated Sophia. Sophia knocked on the classroom door and we were called in. Izuku looked around and saw all the people he met at the mall and then he made eye contact with both of the males who were staring at him. Oh God, I don't think I can handle both of them looking at me and why do the marks burn slightly, thought Izuku. However, he did mumble most of it out loud which made Sophia catch most of it. I think he just said he had marks on him that is burning slightly. It seems he is their soulmate. Thought Sophia. The teacher James called on me to introduce myself to the class. I hope I don't make a mistake and make a fool out of myself. Hello everyone. 
My name is Izuku Midoriya and I come from the UA in Japan. My family moved over here to America to be with my father and I decided to move here as well. My quirk is called Superpower OFA, and it enhances the aspects of my body. Currently, I can enhance my speed, endurance, agility, and reflexes with my quirk. I currently can only control percent of my quirk. If I push it, I end up breaking my body. My control will increase with time and as I gain more body mass. Any questions, asked Izuku. Sophia was already sitting up with the others from the mall and raised her hand to ask a question. As such, I picked on her and she had asked me what hero name I was going to use. I had a different hero name in Japan, but I decided to change it to Paragon, stated Izuku. Several other classmates asked me questions and I answered them. Most were about my likes and dislikes. The teacher said that was enough and told me to pick a seat. I started to head to one side of the room when Sophia told me to come to sit with her friend group. This seemed to shock the class that I was asked to sit with her and the others. Time passed and the class was coming to an end. Soon it was time for lunch and Sophia dragged me with her and the people from the mall to a table in the mess hall where everyone was looking at me since most people wouldn't dare sit with the group. Sophia told me that it's due to the fact that her friend group is the strongest of their school year and can also take on most of the upperclassmen currently. I started to talk to the others and we all hit it off. I was asked to join their group message and told me that they wanted me to hang out with me. I felt happy about this and for some reason wanted to get closer to Alex and Lucas some unknown reason. I knew I found them hot, but there is no way they would go for me. Right. Right. What I didn't know is that they wanted to get close to me as well and I would soon find out later that day why I had the marks on my body. It would change my life for the better if anyone ever asked me. After lunch was over, we all headed back to the classroom and waited for the teacher. Once the teacher came in, he started the lessons that he had planned and said that the last class for heroics will be changed to a quirk assessment test today due to Izuku arriving in the class. The teacher wanted to see where Izuku was and have everyone do the test again to see where they are currently. All right class, gather your things and head to the locker room and change into your hero outfits and go out to the track field. We are going to do the quirk assessment test and see where everyone currently places in the class and have Izuku compare to that. Yelled James Izuku followed all the males to the changing room and moved to a section that was assigned to him. As such, Alex and Lucas didn't get to see if he had the marks on him. However, they did hear a few people ask Izuku about tattoos that he had on his body and Izuku told those classmates that they just appeared a few days ago. We just need to see them confirm percent that they are our marks and then we can ask him to become a part of our relationship thought both Alex and Lucas. This is due to the fact that even without the marks of him being their soulmates, they both found Izuku adorable and wanted to spoil him. The soulmate marks could only help find the soulmate by the burning sensation which keeps happening around Izuku. It was their job to put the effort in and get him to fall in love with them. They have waited years to find their soulmate and they can take this slowly if they need to if that is what Izuku wants. Everyone started to head out to the track field and Izuku started to see everyone in their outfits. Izuku was glad that he decided to change his outfit since his old one wouldn't really compare to everyone else. Izuku Outfit, Description, The outfit is able to siphon off excess energy from OFA and redirect the energy into Izuku's cape description. The outfit is able to siphon off excess energy from OFA and redirect the energy into Izuku's cape. This allows the cape to be transformed into a hardened shield to project himself and civilians from projectiles and other attacks. The outfit is equipped with special hand gloves that have shock absorption abilities so that Izuku can handle excess shock from his attacks. This also applies to his shoes as well. The outfit provides overall defenses from blunt force attacks and has resistances to most elemental attacks. Alex White Outfit, Alex White Outfit, Description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field. The outfit was made to be able to transform with the user into their half-transformation state and be able to handle the strain of being compacted when the user uses full transformation. Outfit disappears during full transformation due to quirk but is put under a high level of strain due to the quirk. The outfit was built with this in mind. 
Lucas Outfit, Description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field. The outfit was made to be able to withstand the heat and fire of the user's full transformation and be able to handle the strain of being compacted when the user uses full transformation. Outfit disappears during full transformation due to quirk but is put under a high level of strain due to the quirk. The outfit was built with this in mind. Skylar Baker Outfit, Description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field. The outfit was made with slits on the back for when uses make their wings appear. Outfit allows flexibility of flight and fast movements of the user quirk. The outfit also helps the user gather light and stores it to be used for their quirk. Rose Harrison Outfit, Description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field. The outfit was made to be able to withstand all the different elements that the user can produce via their quirk. The outfit is also made to resist being torn due to strain produced by the user's quirk. Sophia Jones Outfit, Description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field description, Outfit provides basic defenses against the most common type of attacks on the field. The outfit was made with slits on the back for when uses make their wings appear. Outfit allows flexibility of flight and fast movements of the user quirk. The outfit also helps the user blend in at night for stealth missions. RDPOV, everyone was stationed outside and was waiting for the next set of instructions from the teacher. The group of friends that Izuku has made decided to surround him with Alex on his left and Lucas on his right. They decided to stand very close to Izuku which caused Izuku to blush which didn't go unnoticed by the two men. It seems he may like us thought both of them. The girls were standing behind the three males and were just trying to suppress their giggling since they found the situation cute. Okay everyone, let us start doing the tests. We are going to do a standard test from ball throw to running laps. Then I will tally the results and see where everyone places. We will also have some quirkless spars as well. Stated the teacher. Time skip end of the test, the class was shocked at the end result of the test. It wasn't surprising that the original group of five students were all at the top of the class again and Alex and Lucas tied for first. No, what surprised them was the fact that Izuku had tied with Lucas and Alex but had won the quirkless spars against both of them. This meant that Izuku was roughly stronger than both of them and then everyone remembered that Izuku said he only had control of percent of his quirk currently. They were all freaking out since he would only get stronger. Izuku, Lucas, Alex, Skylar, Sophia, Rose rest of the class down the list. The group of friends was so happy that Izuku was this strong. It meant that their group would only get stronger when facing off against other classmates across all the years and when. They faced villains they would be able to win at a better rate. The teacher had dismissed them all to go change and told them that they could go home for the rest of the day. Alex and Lucas wanted to get closer to Izuku and confirm if he had the soul mate mark on his body. Even though they are percent sure. Hey Izuku said Lucas and Alex at the same time. Why yes, responded Izuku, cute he stutters to us. Thought both of them. We were wondering if you wanted to hang out with both of us while the females go do their thing. We wanted to get closer to you and know more about you. We know this quiet place in the forest on campus and wanted to show you it if you are willing, asked Alex. Izuku thought about it and really wanted to get close to them as well. He wanted to know if the two of them were dating each other and if he really even had a chance with either of them. The self-doubt that Izuku had developed due to his life could be seen on his face, this was caught by Lucas and Alex and it had worried them a bit. Sure, I would like to get to know you two more as well. I did have questions for you guys anyway that I can ask now, said Izuku. They finished changing in their respective areas and then set off after telling the girls where they were taking Izuku. The girls knew what the two males were actually planning, they wanted to see if they can find the marks on Izuku and see if he is willing to pursue a relationship with them. Sophia never mentioned to the others what Izuku said while he was mumbling in class earlier because she wanted the two males to pursue Izuku themselves and do to the work. 
Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth it if they didn't show Izuku that they wanted to be with him even without the marks. Izuku, Alex, and Lucas soon arrived at the spot that they wanted to show Izuku. Izuku looked at it and was taken away at how appealing that he found it. It's so appealing, stated Izuku while looking around. While doing this he didn't notice how Lucas and Alex were blushing and lighting up due to how happy Izuku looked at being taken here. Alex and Lucas had a silent conversation via their eyes and came to an agreement that they needed to know if Izuku was their soulmate Alex and Lucas had a silent conversation via their eyes and came to an agreement that they needed to know if Izuku was their soulmate. They are falling in love with him at a quick pace and they have only known him for a short time. Everything he does keeps making them want to cuddle and tease him. He acts so kind to everyone and even stepped in when a random kid was being rude to a kid with a quirk that allowed him to silence all noise around him. They found this so amazing that he didn't care that he was brand new to the school, he refused to let injustice happen in front of him. They needed to know if he had the marks, but they think they would still love him even if he didn't have their marks. Izuku, though this area is indeed appealing, it is not as appealing as you are, said Alex, indeed. You are a appealing star just by yourself, said Lucas. This caused Izuku to freeze up and blush strong. He didn't understand why they were saying this stuff, he thought they were dating each other and was so happy that he could have them as his friends since almost everyone in his last class betrayed him. While Izuku was thinking this, he also mumbled it, such a bad habit. This caused Alex's and Lucas's eyes to widen since they heard several things that concerned them about his past and his beliefs of his self-worth. Just so you know Izuku, you are mumbling your thoughts. We've heard several things that concern us and we will talk about them later. However, we also wanted to talk to you about something that connects Lucas and me together. Alex said. Alex and myself are connected via our soulmate marks. Lucas shows his phoenix mark while Alex shows his dragon mark we are able to tell that both of us are connected to each other via another individual. We believe that person is you Izuku. We've heard you mention several times about having gotten new marks on your body that resembles ours and we wanted to confirm if they are indeed like ours. Lucas said. Izuka mind was going many miles an hour at all the new information. He realized he only received the marks on his body after he touched both Lucas and Alex at the mall since he didn't have them before then. He also realized that they have confessed that they have feelings for him as well. This made Izuku so happy but also afraid that if his marks are not the same, then what would happen? I did discover that I had two marks that resemble your marks. I have a dragon mark that has a black tent on my left bicep and a red phoenix tented mark on my right bicep. Izuku said and then rolled up his shirt sleeves and shows the marks to Lucas and Alex. This confirmed what they wanted to know and the moment they saw the marks they leaned over to their respective marks and them. This caused all the marks to have a slight burning sensation and glow. This proved that the marks are connected to each other. Izuku was surprised and blushed strong when they leaned over to his biceps and them. However, he found that he didn't hate it and wanted them to keep doing it. What exactly does this mean for me and you guys, asked Izuku while blushing. This made Lucas and Alex happy since Izuku didn't outright reject them and blushed at their actions. They then started to explain to Izuku the facts that Alex's and Lucas's quirks provide them a long lifespan and hyper-healing abilities once their soul mate has been found and the marks confirmed on all sides which were just completed. They also told Izuku that since they confirmed the marks on him and completed the marks by their respective marks and made them all glow that they completed the bond which grants Izuku the same long lifespan and healing abilities that they both have. Izuku was shocked at this since that meant he was essentially getting two new quirks due to the soulmate mark. They explained that Izuku receives these abilities to ensure that he lives a long life with them since neither Lucas and Alex are able to mate with any other person besides their soulmate. Izuku got confused at the mating comment and asked them to explain further on that point. They explained that they could conduct SXL acts with each other or others but they could never get anyone PRGN and besides their main soulmate who is Izuku. They also told him that their quirks had changed his body to allow only them to get him PRG in it since their quirks changed his body to allow this to happen. He could only get PRG in it when both sides of the soulmate mark desired the result to happen. Otherwise, the new body parts remained unusable for his body. 
This new information about the changes to his body kind of shocked him and made him a bit angry that his body was changed without his consent. It was one thing that he received marks, but to have been given an entirely new organ was a completely different thing. Lucas and Alex could tell that Azuka got after the new organ part of the story and were worried he would reject them over it. Listen up, it is one thing to mark my body but to create an entirely new organ in my body without my consent concerns me. I do have questions that I want truthful answers to. It will decide how I move forward based on those answers. Do you understand? Izuku stated with a tone. Alex and Lucas agreed to provide any information that he wanted and expressed that they were sorry that their quirks caused the changes without his consent. Izuku was happy and became less PSS once they expressed their regret over not being able to get his consent to the body changes. Izuku POV, I cannot really be mad at them about their quirks causing this. I will request them to provide me their quirk registration details to confirm what they are saying matches their quirk descriptions. If it does, I will just have to accept the result. The fact that if this does turn into a relationship would mean I could have my own biological kids does make me happy, to be honest. I want to know if the soul mate marks cause any changes to my mental thinking, i.e., makes me fall in love for you or have more thoughts that are influenced towards you too. Izuku asked, I really hope it doesn't. I want my feelings that I've been having towards these two to be real and not falsely created due to a quirk. Izuku thought, no, it has no effect on your mental state in regards to your emotions about us. Once you learn how to do it, you can send some of your emotions to the other side of the mark to let us know how you feeling without telling us. But we'll take time to learn how to do so. You may have felt a burning sensation before, that would be due to our feelings causing your mark to react to us having thoughts about you. Though they cannot influence your emotions, they can only show how we are feeling if we really focused on sending you our emotions, said Alex. Izuku was happy his feelings weren't created due to a quirk. Izuku then asked them many other questions about being PRGNNT and how that would actually happen and asked them to provide him their quirk descriptions that the doctors created. Alex POV, Lucas and I were answering all of Izuku's questions and it seems to have made him less angry about the new organ thing. He also asked for more details about being PRGNNT and we could tell that he seemed kind of happy that he could have kids. I could feel Lucas was happy due to our connection via the marks, even though they are not directly soulmates but are connected via Izuku, they can still feel each other's emotions since the marks have granted them this ability, and I was also happy about the thought of having kids of our own. We were also surprised but happy that he wanted to know more of our quirks via our quirk doctor notes and wasn't going to take our words at face value. It would be weird for anyone to take something like this at face value after only meeting a few times. Lucas POV, so do you have any more questions for us? I asked him. No I don't have any direct questions about this situation currently and I will verify what you said via your quirk doctor's notes since you have said all of this information is known to them. It will help trust you too in regards to all of this if it was indeed documented down long before now. Izuku stated. He seemed to have something else he wanted to say so Alex asked him to speak his mind. I, I, I am taking it that you two are wanting to start a relationship with me with the plans of you both ma marrying me in the future due to our soulmate marks correct, asked Izuku. We indeed want to start a relationship with you with the end goal of marrying you. Due to our quirks, we all three will live long lives and before we even were able to confirm that you were our soulmate, we had started to take a liking to you as well. I believe that even without the marks, I and Lucas would have arrived at this point with you. As such, Izuku would you like to start a relationship with Alex and me? I asked with Lucas asking the last part as well. Izuku POV, I was shocked that they said they were starting to like me before they even confirmed that I was even their soulmate. That does make me feel relieved and happy that this isn't based on the sole fact of the marks. Though I need to know if they will respect my boundaries in regards to my secrets. If we do stay in a long-term relationship then I would tell them the truth behind my quirk and the fact that I was quirkless. Before I answer that question, I need you to answer a few more of mine, I stated. They looked worried that I would say no. I just need to know if they would have accepted me even if I was still quirkless. They said they will answer anything so here we go I guess. What is your opinion on quirkless people? 
This seemed to have shocked them since they were not expecting this question. They answered that they don't care if someone has a quirk or not and that Lucas's grandmother is quirkless and they both love her. Both of their families are close to each other due to the fact that they know about the soulmate marks. America has a slightly higher quirkless rate than Japan and has more laws protecting them from discrimination. As such, I decided to tell them a partial truth about my quirk. The reason I ask this is due to the fact that I was quirkless for years of my life. I received my quirk roughly a few months before the UA entrance exam in Japan. As such, do you still like me even though I was quirkless not even a year ago? I asked them and waited to be rejected. RDPOV, Lucas and Alex were a bit shocked about the fact that Izuku was quirkless for most of his life and only recently received his quirk. But it saddens them that he closed his eyes and seemed ready for us to reject him. Lucas looked over to Alex and they both moved over to Izuku. Lucas put his hand under Izuku's chin and raised his head to face us and then Alex and Lucas both leaned in and his cheeks. Izuku opened his eyes quickly and blushed. He was shocked that they him on his cheeks and didn't reject him. Why didn't you reject me? Whenever anyone found out that I was quirkless, they all hated me. Only my parents and second father figure loved me regardless of that fact. So why? Izuku shouted. This saddens both Lucas and Alex since it seems that people have harmed their soul mate just because he was quirkless. Regardless if you were to return to being quirkless, we would still love you Izuku. Alex state, and then agreed by Lucas. We will want to talk about your experiences of your past of being previously quirkless since I don't think America is as bad as Japan due to our laws. But we still love you our little son. Lucas said. This made Izuka blush at being called their little son and made him so happy that they wanted to know more about him and didn't reject him. Izuku then started to explain everything about his past and the events leading him to come here. He explained about the bullies and how the teachers and adults in his life expect his parents to neglect him. He talked about how his bully told him to take a swan dive and pray for a quirk in the next life and how he went on to meet All Might the same day. He did talk about All Might's words on the rooftop but did ask them to forgive him since he apologized for his words and offered to train Izuku. He then went on and talked about how after gaining enough muscle mass, his body was able to withstand his quirk which isn't a lie and he didn't tell them about OFA since that is something he and all might need to discuss first, and that he was only able to control percent and was able to get it to percent before coming to America. Izuku also explained that his bully that suicide baited him was one of his classmates at the UA in Japan and that the same kid had spread rumors about Izuku saying that he bullied people in the past before UA and that he had picked on a quirkless person. This caused a small laugh out of Alec and Lucas since the bully picked. The wrong type of rumor to spread that could be disproven easily. Izuka did explain that a few more things like that All Might was essentially family to him and his parents and that he is a legal guardian of Izuku in case something happens to his parents. But in the end, he decided to keep OFA a secret for now until the relationship develops further and he has talked to All Might about letting the group know. Izuka felt that his new lovers and other three friends will become a permanent aspect of his life. Izuka POV Thank you guys for still wanting to be with me even after knowing all of that. I do want to say though there is some stuff I am keeping secret for now and I may tell you one day. I need you to respect that I am keeping it a secret for a reason and not push me on it please, said Izuku. Lucas and Alex were happy that Izuku was willing to trust them enough to tell them about all of the things that have happened to him. Izuku even agreed to let Alex and Lucas inform the others in their group about his past so they knew as well since the entire friend group really liked Izuku. He even told them that he had some secrets left that they don't know but wanted to keep it secret for now. Of course we would still want to be with you even with everything you have gone through. It just means we need to show you, even more, love our little son. We will respect your secrets. All that we ask of you is that you consider telling us one day in the future and that if for some reason the secrets put you in imminent danger that you tell us so we can help you. Okay, little son. Said Alex. I can agree with that. I said. So I take it we are dating now and you two are my boyfriends right? I asked shyly. They said yes to my question and were wondering why I was acting shy. Can why, UKK embrace me please? 
I asked as I blushed a deep red. Lucas lifted my head and me on the lips. Alex soon followed and me as well and said that I don't even have to ask them. They said I could embrace them and do whatever I want with their bodies since they will be with me for the rest of my life. I was so happy at that moment that I jumped into Alex's arms and asked them to cuddle with him for a bit. RDPOV, all three of them were sitting on some flat rocks near the water. Izuku was laying with his head resting on Alex's chest while Lucas was snuggling up next to Alex and wrapped his arms around Izuku's waist and pulled his body close to his so Izuku's upper body was on Alex and his lower was pressed against Lucas. They stayed like this for more minutes. Izuku then asked a question that scared both Lucas and Alex. So when are you two going to tell my family about this new development because I'm not doing the explaining for this? Izuku asked while grinning. They had forgotten they needed to explain this to his family and they had just found out that the world's hashtag hero All Might considered Izuku a son. They were screwed. After the cuddle session the three new lovers had, Izuku decided to drop a bomb on his two lovers. Lucas and Alex were responsible for telling his family about the marks and them entering a relationship. Lucas and Alex were not scared of many things but they were scared of what the Midoriya family would say or do to them. They didn't want to lose their soul mate because his family rejected him and decided to have his father figure all might kill the two of them off. Izuku was just giggling at his new boyfriend's expressions since he could tell they were worried about his family. Izuku knew it was bad of him to find their current state funny, but he couldn't help himself. Don't worry, I am highly doubtful that they will reject you. The only part you are going to have some negative feedback on is the part of the new body organ. Just be honest with your intentions and don't hide anything from my family and they should accept it. Izuku told his new boyfriends. This had to help Lucas and Alex calm down a bit. They suggested they should start heading back to the school building and get their things to go to Izuku's house so that they could talk to his family as soon as possible. The two boys didn't want to delay this at all because it could be seen as trying to hide the situation from Izuku's family. As Izuku and the two others were heading back to the buildings, Izuku pulled out his phone and called his mother to warn her that they would have guests coming. The family wanted to hide his connection to his father and the Spitfire company, but this was a meeting that needed to happen now. Phone call, I equals Izuku M equals mother, Inko, M, sweetie where are you? School ended roughly an hour ago. I, I know mom, I was with some friends that I have made here at the school. They are the people from the mall. I wanted to let you know I'm bringing two of them home with me. I need dad, you, and all might to meet with them. We need to have an important conversation with the entire family and these two f friends of mine. Izuku said the words friends a bit shyly which was picked up by Inko, M, okay dear, your father and all might both had arrived just a few minutes ago. I'll let them know that we are having some guests over. Will they be staying for dinner tonight? I, yes, I believe they will be. The topic we will be talking about cannot wait and it's best that the entire family gets to know these two new friends of mine. I also need to talk to All Might about some things. Asterisk whispers, warn him that he needs to be in his buff form since they don't know about his other side yet. Asterisk M, I'm kind of shocked that Izuku bringing people home so quickly since we plan to hide his connections to his father and the company. The fact that he also told the friends about All Might being family is also shocking. Thought Inko. Okay dear, I'll make sure dinner is prepared for everyone. When do you think you will be here? I, we will get home in the next minutes. Love you mom. End phone call Lucas and Alex could hear parts of the phone conversation and knew that the entire family would be there. They were happy that Izuku wanted his entire family to meet them. As they arrived at the school building, they ran into the girls from the group and told them that the three of them would be going to meet Izuku's parents. Lucas and Alex did tell the girls that they did confirm that Izuku is indeed had the soulmate marks on him and that they had activated them. Izuku, can we come to join you all at your house? asked Skylar. Izuku tensed at this and everyone saw that. Girls, I am going to have to say no to that today. Lucas and Alex are going to inform my family about the changes to my body and the fact that we three are in a relationship now. I don't think my family can handle more than this tonight. However, if everything goes well and my family doesn't react badly, 
You girls could come later this week or next week okay, said Izuku. The girls found this acceptable since they agreed his parents are going to be dealing with a lot of new information about their son and two new boyfriends. As such, everyone split off from each other and the three boys started to head towards Izuku's home. Izuku's home was only a minute walk away from the school and the two boys were stunned when they saw his home. Asterisk note, everyone in the friend group comes from more wealthy families, however, remember that Izuku's father owns the world's wealthiest company Asterisk note, everyone in the friend group comes from more wealthy families, however, remember that Izuku's father owns the world's wealthiest company. As such, they are far better off than the rest of Izuku's new friend group, I thought our families were rich, but this takes it to the next level, Lucas and Alex both said. Izuku was just laughing internally since his father had told Izuku about all the most important wealthy families that his family does business with which included all of his friend's parents. Well, it's new to me as well since I grew up in Japan with my mother before returning to America to live it, father. As such, I'm new to the rich thing as well since the mother wanted to live a more honest life in Japan. Izuku said. This impressed the boys that Izuku lived a more honest life and knew not to flaunt money since all of their families made them be aware of what they spent and how to manage money since they would take over the family businesses. Izuku lead Lucas and Alex into the house and told them to get ready to meet the family. Lucas and Alex steeled themselves since this was their best chance to gain Izuku's family approval of their relationship. Izuku POV, after I brought Lucas and Alex into the house, I had them stay in the main living room and went to find my family. I arrived in the private family living room and found them waiting for me. Welcome home son. Your mother said you wanted to bring some friends over to the house. Where are they? Asked my father. I left them in the main living room for now. All might, you can drop your buff form for now. They won't come here until I ask them. I stated. My boy, I'm surprised you already told them some details about the family. Is there a reason for that? All might ask. I explained to them that a situation has developed that Lucas and Alex were going to be responsible for explaining and that it was connected to the two marks on his body. All Might, I know you want to keep your skinny form a secret for now, but I want to ask you to consider revealing it to them after you heard them explain themselves. I am also considering telling them about OFA but that won't be until later in the future. That is how serious of a situation this is. I told them. All three of my parents were shocked that I wanted to have All Might reveal his form and that I had brought up OFA in the conversation. My boy, I don't understand what would cause you to want to reveal this information, said All Might. My parents also agreed with All Might. I told them that they will understand once we all had the conversation that Lucas and Alex need to talk about. They agreed and wanted me to bring them to the private family room. As such, I left and went and got Lucas and Alex while All Might went into his muscle form. I went back to the main living room and warned Lucas and Alex to be ready and that I would be taking them to the private family room. I told them that the two of them would sit with him on the couch with him with one on each side of him. They agreed to this and were happy that Izuku would be openly supporting them via his actions. As Izuku lead the two boys to the private family room, he decided to grab both Lucas and Alex's hands before they entered. As they entered, his family noticed that he was holding the two boys' hands and were shocked. I knew he wasn't into girls but damn he worked fast didn't he? Thought all three of his parents. That's right, Izuku's family knew he was gay or bi for some time. Izuku was freaking out inside since his family was staring at his hands as the three of them sat down on the couch. Mom, Dad, All Might. Meet Lucas and Alex. They have some things that they want to talk to you guys about that needs to happen now. Whatever happens, please know that I am wanting this as well. Said Izuku. His family was surprised and figured this was just him introducing his new boyfriends to the family. They were correct but also so so far off the mark. Time skip end of explanation RDPOV. Well, Izuku thought that the situation could have gone worse. By the end of the conversation, Izuku's mother was screaming something about grandbabies while Izuku's father just looked like he wanted to murder his two new boyfriends All Might however just looked completely done with Izuku. 
Izuku swore he heard All Might mumble something about how his boy keeps getting into way too many screwed up situations. Which to be honest is fair in regards to Izuku since Izuku seems to find himself in weird things. So, are you all okay with this new situation? Izuku asked his family. All Might and Izuku's mother told Izuku that they supported him and his newfound situation. Izuku's father on the other hand was still glaring at Alex and Lucas. Dad are you okay? Izuku asked his father. He was scared his father would reject him and his new boyfriends. All Might and Inko noticed that Hisashi hasn't said anything and also became worried. They knew it wasn't about Izuku being gay since they all had guessed before now. Lucas and Alex please follow me to my private study. I want to have a private conversation with you too. Hisashi said and then got up leaving towards his study. The boys told Izuku they would be right back and him on the cheeks. Izuku was a bit worried that his father would try to kill his boyfriends. Don't worry my boy. I think your father is just about the changes to your body without your consent and is a little just wants to scare them a bit, All Might said. Izuku's mother told Izuku that she agreed with All Might's thinking. All Might also warned Izuku that depending on how the conversation between Hisashi and the boys goes, he would be showing them his skinny form. He also understood why Izuku wanted to tell them about OFA but recommend that they wait for that until at least their second year or third before talking about it. Izuku agreed to that and was happy All Might was willing to reveal the information. Izuku also asked that All Might reveal his form to the three girls in the group, Skylar, Rose, and Sophia, if he brought them by the house tomorrow. All Might agreed with this since he would be showing the two boys and he wanted Izuku to have a firm support group here in America. Hisashi POV, private study, just like Izuku's private study, I decided to take the two boys to my private study because I wanted to have a serious conversation with them and Izuku would likely try to stop me if he knew what I wanted to do. Once we arrived in my study, I had Lucas and Alex sit down on the couch while I stood across from them. Boys, do you know why I wanted to talk to you without Izuku present? I asked them. They looked back at me and didn't falter even though I was glaring them down. That's good, I don't need weak boys with my son, thought Hisashi. We think it has something to do with the changes to Izuku body. Said Alex. Lucas agreed with that statement. You would be correct. I want to make something clear. I'm not opposed to the relationship itself. I knew my son was gay or bi for a while now. I said which shocked them a bit but they cooled their facial expressions. I wanted you two to explain more about the body changes that Izuku went through and then I have some conditions to the relationship that I will impose. I doubt you will disagree with them since they would directly benefit you in a way. I just want to ensure my son is happy and protected. I told them. They started to explain that the marks didn't have any effect on Izuku's mental state, that it allowed them to send their emotions so each side knew how they were doing. This only happened once Izuku started to get more in tune with the mark which will naturally happen. They also explained that it did give him a new organ that is useless without either of the boys and required both them and Izuku to want a baby for the organ to even function. This meant that only Lucas and or Alex could get Izuku PRGNNT and that Izuku wouldn't have to worry about having a baby due to being raped or having a baby with them on accident. This fixes some of my worries about my son being taken advantage of. Thought Hisashi. Hisashi was also was happy that Izuku did get a copy of their quirk descriptions that the school had on file before coming home. This showed that they were indeed telling the truth about everything they knew and that Izuku was also getting benefits from their quirk as well. Thank you boys for explaining more in detail about the effects of your quirk. This has eased some of my worries. That being said, if you want my approval of the relationship then here are the conditions I'm setting out. You all three will get engaged with documents being signed by all of the families. You three will get married by the end of high school and or whenever you get your full hero licenses. You two are to start increasing the time you live with Izuku here at our house. This is due to the fact that I want you guys to get used to being with each other nearly slash and this allows me to ensure my son is being treated right. I want your families to agree to the conditions I have set for you two and announce to other families that you are already engaged. Hisashi said. 
This stunned Lucas and Alex since these conditions would be easy to meet and they wanted to ask the Midoriya family anyway to have him engaged to them. America in this AU allows multi-person marriage if due to quirks. I know you two are from the ND and RD wealthiest families behind my family. As such, I will not have my son being hurt because other families are wanting to get married to you too. Once your families agree to the engagement, it is to be registered with the government under the Quirk Marriage Act that allows for multi-person marriages and engagements due to quirks. Do you two agree with this? Hisashi said. Yes. Shouted both boys. This shocked Izuku's dad for a second. Then the boys had explained to Hisashi that they were planning to ask for an engagement before they even realized who Izuku's father was and would be happy to agree to his terms. They also told Hisashi that their families reject any request for engagements from other families due to their soulmate marks. Their families knew that the boys would never be able to have offspring if it wasn't with their mate anyway. As such, their families would agree straight away to have it registered and announced. I'm glad you boys will be agreeing to these requests, let's head back to the other room before Izuka freaks out and thinks I killed you too. Oh and boys, I don't know how much Izuku has told you of his childhood but please love and protect him as best as you can. People in Japan were not kind to my son. Hisashi said with a sad tone. The boys responded that Izuku did tell them that he only recently received his quirk because his body wouldn't have handled it any time before the UA exams in Japan so they knew most of his life. They did tell Hisashi that Izuku told them that he did have secrets that they needed to respect but promised if it became an imminent danger to himself that Izuku would tell them. Hmm, looks like Izuku has really placed a great deal of trust and love in them and they have been returning it. Looks like I have two new son-in-laws thought Hisashi. Izuku POV, I was talking with All Might and Mom while waiting for Dad to bring my boyfriends back. God, he better not have killed them. I groaned out. My mother just laughed at me while All Might just looked stunned with the situation. Soon we heard the three of them returning and then Lucas and Alex ran into me on the couch and started to embrace me on the cheeks. I blushed strong and asked them what got them so happy while trying not to stutter. They responded that my father had approved of the relationship but set conditions on them for his approval. I was a bit disappointed that dad did that but then Lucas and Alex said that they agreed with it since it was something they had planned to ask Izuku's parents anyway. This surprised me since I couldn't figure out what my dad asked them. We agreed to get engaged with you and register it with the government under the Quirk Marriage Act which allows multi-person engagements and marriages due to quirks. Also, we agreed that we would start increasing the time we lived here with you so we can get used to being around each other slash, said Lucas. Izuku was now blushing strong while trying to cover his face from embarrassment due to his father and boyfriends. However, Lucas and Alex wouldn't let him hide from them. Lucas pulled Izuku into his lap while sitting down on the couch. Alex then got in front of Lucas and Alex and pulled Izuku's legs up onto his shoulders and started to embrace Izuku's lips with Lucas's neck. However, they forgot they had an audience. Well, Congratulations my boy but please keep this to your living quarters and not the main house, said All Might which scared all three boys. Izuku was even more embarrassed due to being caught like that while Lucas and Alex only changed their positions so Izuku was just sitting in Lucas's lap with Alex sitting next to them holding Izuku's hand. It seemed like they were only slightly embarrassed that they got caught doing that. My mother was just in the background screaming about grandbabies while dad and All Might were both looking just done with this situation. Dad explained the conditions to me again to make sure I understood and then told us all to move to the dining room off to the side so we could all start eating. After everyone was sitting down and started to eat, All Might called out to Lucas and Alex and told them that they were being entrusted with another secret of the family. Alex. Lucas. Since you two will be a permanent part of Izuka's life, that means you need to know some things. One of those things is this is not my true form anymore. All Might said as he dropped his muscle form and went to his skinny form. This shocked Lucas and Alex. They had so many questions on what happened to the symbol of peace for the world and how to connect it to Izuku. I received a wound roughly, years ago that resulted in this form. My time as the symbol of peace is coming to an end. I also need you to realize that Izuku is my successor who I have been training. 
That is why I became so close to this family since I have come to see Izuku as a son during our training. Though there is one more secret that will not be shared with you currently. You will be informed of that most likely in the middle of your end year or the start of your third. This secret does have a great impact on Izuku's entire life. That's why you are being informed of all of this. All Might said. Lucas and Alex thanked All Might for telling them and told him that Izuku promised to consider telling them his secrets if it ever put him in imminent danger which they were okay and happy with. The last secret that I have has to do with All Might and myself. It is the one that you will need to wait a few years before learning, but as I promised if it ever puts me in imminent danger I would tell you too. I told them. They responded by my cheeks. They make me so happy. I am so glad I have them in my life now. Time skip, RDPOV, the family dinner ended and Lucas and Alex went home to inform their families about finding Izuku and the conditions that Izuku's father had set for them. The last day All Might would be in America before returning to Japan came and passed. Izuku had brought the remaining people of the group to his house and introduced them to his family. The girls were shocked at All Might's form but accepted it. Lucas and Alex had already told the girls previously about Izuku's past and they all vowed to his family to stay friends with him and help in Izuku's life. Everyone else's parents was invited to come to the house to meet Izuku's family. Though All Might didn't show the parents his true form for now since they were not directly connected to Izuku. All Might explained to the kids that he wanted to limit who knew about the form currently until he retired since it would have a great impact on crime rates. The kids all agreed to keep the form a secret from the parents for now. Izuku was introduced to everyone's parents and got along great with Lucas's and Alex's parents. All of the parents wanted to spoil Izuku since they found him adorable. All of the families knew about the soulmate marks and knew that the three boys would have kids in the future. This allowed the three boys' mothers to scream in the background about grandbabies which just embarrassed the boys. The boys' fathers were all sitting in Hisashi's study going over the paperwork for the engagement and registration with the government. No one had any objections about the conditions that Hisashi set and Lucas and Alex's fathers even suggested that the three families combine the companies ST and A and are the largest companies in the world to form a conglomerate that would manage the three individual companies. They suggested this since all three families only have one kid who would inherit the family company and they are all soulmates who would be getting married in a few years. Hisashi agreed to form a conglomerate that would slowly start taking control of the three over the next two years so that business wouldn't be slowed down. The three fathers would run the conglomerate and have the children start learning in the conglomerate so they would be able to take over in the next decade or so. The fathers went and informed everyone else about the agreements being made and the decision to join the individual companies into a conglomerate. Skylar's, Sophia's, and Rose's families agreed to cooperate with the conglomerate and start any new business deals directly with the conglomerate once it was created. Overall, the last day for All Might being in America went great. Izuku has found himself a new friend group and the family has new adults to interact with that know some of the secrets of the Midorias. All Might was happy that the life of his successor was looking up but was sad that he had to return to Japan since his flight was scheduled to leave that night. All Might gathered everyone in the main family room after having gathered his suitcases. Everyone, it was an amazing time meeting you all. I am thankful that you all will be here for Izuku and will support him. I want to say to the kids, always stick together. I see that you all have grown to be a tight-knit group even with the addition of Izuku. This will do you amazing things in the pro-hero world to have such people to trust and rely on. Remember if you ever fight amongst yourselves to take a step back and let all sides explain what truly happened from their point of view. Don't let go of your friends nor your love for each other over small matters. All Might said. Everyone thanked him and wished him the best of luck when he returned to Japan. My boy, remember to call me whenever you need my help or just want to talk. Even if I'm teaching a class, you come before anyone else in my life do you understand? said All Might to Izuku. Yes, I do All Might. Thanks for being in my life. said Izuku. All Might then left and was taken by one of the family's drivers to the airport to catch his flight. Everyone else slowly started to slow down for the night and went home. 
Alex and Lucas had already brought a lot of their clothing and personal items over to Izuku's living quarters so that they could start living with him. Izuku even offered some spare rooms to Skylar, Rose, and Sophia since his house that was separated from the main building was still large and everyone could have their privacy. The girls said they would slowly start living in Izuku's separated building but wanted Izuku, Lucas, and Alex to have alone time for the first few months. This made the three boys blush. Night came and everyone went home that was leaving. Izuku and the boys had left to the boys' room and got changed to sleep. Izuku climbed into the bed and Alex and Lucas each took their respective sides of Izuku and started to cuddle with Izuku. Izuku climbed into the bed and Alex and Lucas each took their respective sides of Izuku and started to cuddle with Izuku. Alex was on Izuku's left with both of them facing each other and Lucas had Izuku's back pulled against his stomach. Izuku was blushing for a while before he got a bit bold and started to make out with Alex who was in front of him while Lucas took the hint and started to embrace Izuku's neck and left a hickey. They carried on making out for a few more minutes before Izuku stopped and started to fall asleep since the day was long and exhausting. We love you Izuku and we are so glad that we have found you little son. Lucas whispered into Izuku's ear while Alex said, We will make sure any wish you have will come true our little son for we shall be your eternal dragon and phoenix. Izuku was a blushing mess as he fell asleep with his two fiancés. Though Izuku didn't know it, the future would become a very difficult one for the world but Izuku would have his fiancés and friends to support him as he becomes the beacon of light to the world and will ascend the ranks of the heroes as he becomes one of the greatest heroes in history for he would become the hero of hope, the paragon. It has been a few weeks seen the families have gotten together in regards to the situation with Izuku. News of Izuku's engagement and him being the soulmate of Alex and Lucas did spread and people were happy for them since Lucas and Alex have been waiting forever for their soulmate. All Might and Izuku call each other every few days to ensure they stay up to date with each other. Classes at school have been going well since the group has only gotten stronger with the addition of Izuku. However, Izuku felt that he wasn't doing enough in regards to OFA. He wanted to increase the control he has at a faster rate so he took some inspiration from his training before UA in Japan. He went and talked to Principal Victor about what he did for training in Japan before he entered the hero school and wondered if there were any places similar nearby the school so that Izuku could increase his training. Since the principal knew Izuku was a dedicated student, the principal did recommend Izuku go down to a beach that has been filled with trash. This beach is actually similar to the one you cleaned back in Japan. Based on the descriptions you have given me, I would say it's near the same level of trash as the beach in Japan. If you plan to clean the beach up, I can arrange for a quirk permit for you and the group so that you may train there without getting into legal trouble. Victor said. Izuku thanked the principal and went back to the group. They had asked him what he needed from the principal and Izuku. Told them about how he trained before going to UA in Japan and asked them if they wanted to join him in doing training by cleaning the beach. He said that since the American UA tournament is coming up in months, it would be good training for it and also serve as a way to give back to the community. Note, UA Japan Sports Festival and American UA tournament are different. The Japan UA needs to use their event to bring in money and allow their students to show off their skills to get internships while the American UA records everything during their tournaments and has other events for students to show off their skills so that pro heroes can watch the recordings and request a student for an internship. American UA, AUA, receives enough funding from past students, donations from the public, and the government that they don't need to make it a moneymaker event for the school. It's no surprise that Lucas and Alex agreed right away since whatever Izuku wanted Izuku got from them. The girls agreed after a few moments of talking about it since All Might had talked to them about always giving back to the community before he left and always supporting each other. It would also be a good way to train their quirks since the principal would arrange for quirk permits for the beach to be used as training grounds for their group. Time skip days, start of the weekend, Izuku went back to the principal the same day and had gotten him to start the paperwork for the permit which Izuku received on Friday. As such, the group all met at Izuku's house so that they could go down as a group. They arrived at the beach and was stunned at the amount of trash that covered it. The entire group asked Izuku about his training before JUA, Japan UA, and how long it took him to clear it all. It took me months to clean the entire beach in Japan which gave me two months of quirk control training since if I attempted before I finished the beach, 
I would have harmed my body badly, stated Azuku. The group thought that with all of them, they could get the beach cleaned roughly before the tournament started. Breakdown of training Alex. Alex would train in his section of the beach by several methods. The first method was that he would transform halfway into the dragon state and would train to increase the amount of trash he could carry and move. This lead to increasing his body's overall abilities in this form. He would also do this in his normal form as well. Alex soon learned while he was training his transformation speed to his full form that he could breathe some fire in his full transformation state. As such, anything that could be burned would be moved to a pile and burned for training. Lucas, Lucas would work on his transformation speed since he did not have a half transformation state like Alex. He would also use his fire to carry the trash since he can control if it burns at will. He would also physically move the trash to train his body. Lucas soon learned that he could turn the fire that he controlled from a more wild form to more hardened forms for making weapons like Spears or Skylar. Skylar used the training to increase the amount of weight she can carry with her wings. She also used her healing abilities to heal anyone that got injured to increase the rate at which she heals while trying to get her energy consumption to go down. She would also train to gather light while moving so that she doesn't have to stop and focuses on gathering the light to make what she needs. Rose, Rose used the training to increase the rate of changing between her elements and using them to destroy the trash or move them depending on the element. She learned to sense the earth particles in any metal that wasn't pure. This allowed her to create a subset of her quirk that allowed a form of some metal manipulation of any metal that has some earth partials left inside of it but she could currently only do it in a small range. Sophia, Sophia used the training similar to Skylar for the training of how much her wings can carry in one go. She also worked on creating what she needed from darkness during the day at a faster pace since she was weaker during the day. She did also work on creating more real-like illusions to fool her opponents. Izuku, Izuku had the most benefit of the training due to OFA control having a relationship with how much muscle mass he had on his body. By the end of the training, he was able to push his control without harming his body to percent. This is also due to the fact that his friends taught him better image training that allowed him to flood his body with OFA at a quicker pace and with more precise control than the water and cup method or cooking food method. Izuku learned that with the previous methods he was only disturbing OFA to the outer part of his body and didn't have it going through his muscles fibers and bones as well. This allowed him to make his body withstand far bigger shocks and attacks. Izuku also learned that OFA had the ability to pass on quirks from the previous users. He learned this one night when Lucas, Alex, and Izuku were sleeping and Izuku had a meeting with the TH user Nana Shimura. She explained that he had gained a far deeper understanding of OFA and control that OFA had passed the singularity point. This allowed the previous user's quirks to start pushing out to his body, they decided to give him the TH user's float quirk since it would help him keep up with his friends when they fly. Everyone had the ability to fly via wings or their quirk but Izuku at that point, could jump but not really fly. Izuku woke up and had his quirk activated which made Lucas and Alex worried. Izuku promised that he was alright and that it was part of the secret that he needed them and his friends not to push currently. Izuku would use float during his training at the beach and would learn how to fly from Rose since she had to use her air control to fly which was similar enough to float for Izuku. Overall, the training paid off for a group of friends. They had cleaned the entire beach with weeks left before the AUA tournament started. This would allow them to relax a bit and do light training before the event. Izuku had yet to tell All Might about the new change in OFA because All Might would be arriving a day before the event since the school invited him to come as a guest. As such, Izuku wanted to shock All Might about the change in OFA and his progress. Time skip day before AUA tournament, Izuku POV, I started to wake up and felt arms around me. I opened my eyes and saw that Alex had pulled me halfway onto his chest with Lucas sleeping next to me with his legs around mine and him laying halfway onto me. I just thought about strong it would be to get out of this without waking them up. However, they always get cranky that I don't wake them up when I get up since they only want to be sleeping when I am. Hashtag relationship goals hashtag love my fiancés. As such, I start to shake them a bit to wake them up. It doesn't take long for me to get them awake and them to start taking turns French me. This has turned into a routine of waking up to that every day which I won't reject. 
I've realized I've grown more assertive since being with them and have fixed my self-worth issues that my past has caused. I love you both, but we need to get up. All Might is set to arrive today since the tournament is going to be tomorrow. I said. They grumbled about losing time but got up anyway so we could get changed. It used to be a problem for me showing my body in front of them since I do. Have some scars from my past but they didn't care about any scars on my body and told me that they would love me anyway. The first time I showed them my body was when I got the course to join them both for a bath a few weeks back in my large bathroom tub. They were shocked at first but moved to guide me in the tub and started to embrace my scars to show that they didn't care about them. It gave me so much courage after that day that I no longer cared if they see me naked when I get changed and used the bathroom anymore. As such, we all moved into the bathroom to start taking a shower and get prepared for the day. It also gives me an amazing view of my fiancé's bodies each morning so I can't complain. Thought Izuku Time skipped to lunch, time skipped to lunch All Might arrived at the airport a few minutes ago according to his text so he should be here in the next half hour and the rest of the group has already arrived. I can't wait to show All Might the progress I've made. Izuku said while bouncing on the ball of his feet. Lucas and Alex just giggled softly as they pulled me down onto the couch to lay down on their laps. Calm down little son, he will be here soon and you can show off all you want then whispered Alex into my ear. I kind of want to talk to All Might about revealing OFA sooner since I'm starting to get the previous user's quirks. I don't want to end up lying to my friends, they are trusting me enough to not push the issue and I really want to tell them now. Thought Izuku. While Izuku was having an internal war with himself, Alex and Lucas were just pampering their little son by running their hands through his hair and against his stomach. They noticed Izuku was having an internal debate with himself and wanted him to calm down. Little son, what has you struggling? Asked Alex. This snapped me out of my thoughts. I am thinking about having a conversation with All Might in regards to multiple things and I'm trying to figure out how it will go. I responded. Well, don't stress over it. Just take your time and plan out your thoughts and I'm sure it will go your way, said Lucas. Thanks. Izuku said as he leaned up and Lucas. I am here. With gifts. Yelled All Might as he came in the front door. I jumped up and tackled him into a hug which knocked us both down since he had dropped his muscle form just a few minutes beforehand. Calm down my boy or you might put me in an early grave, I'm not getting any younger. You have certainly gotten bigger in the handful of months I've been gone. Complained All Might as he got off the floor. Izuku was happy that his mentor was here for the tournament. He couldn't wait to show off his progress with OFA and show him float today. I'm glad you are here All Might, there is something I need to talk to you about in private and some things I want to show you as well, I said while bouncing. After everyone greeted All Might and they sat down for lunch, All Might asked Izuku what he wanted to show him. Well, I want to spar you for a few moments and show you the progress I've made with my quirk before I talk to you about the other things, I stated. RDPOV, everyone moved out to the backyard where we had a large forest behind the house that we owned. Okay my boy, you said you had some progress with your quirk, let's do some light sparing and see how you are doing for the event tomorrow. Lucas, can you please count us down from three? All Might said. Lucas did the countdown and All Might dashed off towards Izuku while he was using percent of his OFA. He wanted to see how far Izuku has come and has expected Izuku to be around percent since not a lot of time has passed. Oh, how wrong All Might was in that assumption. Here I go, MSTR. Yelled Izuku as he powered up to his current limit of percent of OFA. Izuku dashed off the ground at an extreme speed that All Might got caught off guard as Izuku landed a blow against All Might's right side and sent All Might flying back. Remember the THOFA is stronger than the THOFA. So percent of Izuku would be stronger than All Might's percent even scaled down to lower percent. What the hell was that? I was going at percent of my quirk my boy. Yelled All Might since Izuku just sent him flying while he was at half of his power. Do you like it, MSTR? I am able to control percent of my quirk, screamed Izuku as he dashed around and was attempting to land kicks on him with his shoot style that he developed. 
All Might was amazed that Izuku has already gotten to percent of OFA and it hasn't been over years that Izuku has had the quirk. Alright my boy, I'm taking this fight up a knock and I'm going to go at percent of my power. Let us see how your powers compare then. All Might yelled as he powered up and charged. Izuku started to lose ground in the spar and was being pushed back slowly and surely. However, he had one more trick up his sleeve. It seems I'm being pushed back MSTR. However, can you beat me when I do this? Izuku said as he got punched backward but then started to slow down and then was floating in the air without touching the ground or using OFA to push off and maintain his floating. WH, what? H, how are you doing that? All Might was flabbergasted. He got so shocked that he took his eyes off Izuku for a moment and didn't notice that Izuku had used OFA and float to fly around him to attack. Izuku had punched All Might when his guard was down and knocked him out of his buff form winning the spar. This shocked the Midoriyas and the group since even though it was a spar and All Might lost because he was shocked, he still lost. All Might POV, Izuku is he is floating. How is he doing that? He never mentioned this happening to him and he has too much experience for it just to have happened. I need to know how he has my MSTR quirk. Wait, where did Izuku go? Then I got attacked from behind and knocked out of my buff form since I lost concentration. Well damn, I just got beat because I lost concentration in a spar after the spar ended, Izuku told me that he needed to speak to me in private. As such, Izuku and myself walked into his father's private study since it was the closest private room in the house. Izuku, can you please tell me how you have another quirk that is the same as my, I asked him. Well all might, it actually happened about a month ago when I received this new quirk. The reason you think it is the same as your MSTR's quirk is that it is her quirk. Izuku said. My thoughts all came to a halt at that statement. Why didn't you tell me before now? We have had phone calls and video chats between then and now. I asked confused. Well, several reasons. Being I wanted to surprise you. I wanted to get a good grasp on the float quirk so you could see that I've gotten a good handle on it. Because I wanted to talk to you in person about the conversation that I had with Nana inside OFA, he said. Well, I would have liked to been told before now, but I can see where he is coming from on wanting to impress me since I am impressed. Wait he said he talked to Nana. You said you talked to Nana inside OFA. Please explain what you mean by that since I've never been able to do that. I was freaking out about how the previous users are inside the quirk itself I guess. Izuku went on to explain what Nana had told him when he was inside OFA. That OFA under him has gained enough power to pass the singularity point, that he obtained a great deal of control by getting to percent of OFA and that he also had gained a far deeper understanding on how to use OFA itself than other users in the past. This confused me for a second until he explains how he uses OFA now instead of the previous methods he now bats his body in OFA and has it sink into his muscle fibers and bones to grant him better control and ability to withstand the shocks of OFA itself since he is using OFA to enhance his entire body instead of just spreading it out across the surface of his body like he used to. Izuku POV, every explaining everything that has happened to All Might he was really happy with the progress and new functions of the quirk that I've gained access to. He was surprised that the previous users leave an echo of themselves that can interact with me now and in the future since I've grown such an understanding of the quirk. All Might, there is something I want to ask you, I said. Yes, my boy, what is it? He asked me. I want to tell my friends the truth about OFA, and before you say no and that we should wait as we planned until next year. Hear me out. My friends already know that float is a separate quirk, however, they are respecting my wishes about the secret and not pushing it. However, they are my friends that I believe I will spend the rest of my life and hero career with. Especially Lucas and Alex since we are soulmates. With the fact that I will be getting more quirks, I think it's better that I tell them the truth about OFA now instead of when I get more quirks that I and them cannot explain away to others as just being a part of my main quirk. I said. All Might sat there in silence for a few moments thinking. My boy. While ideally, I would have wanted to wait until later, I do have to agree that we should tell them about the truth of OFA if they are planning to stick to your side. 
We still don't know what AFO has planned since he hasn't made any moves after the USJ and Hosu. Your soulmates need to know percent of the story since they plan to live their lives with you. All Might said in a serious tone. I thanked All Might and I and him went to the main living room where my friends and parents were waiting for us. They all started talking about how I did defeat All Might in a spar, but I waved it off since All Might wasn't going percent and I shocked him enough to pull that win out. I decided to call everyone's attention to me since we needed to explain the truth about my quirk to my friends. Can I have everyone's attention please? I said. My friends could tell that I was nervous about something and started to reassure me that whatever I wanted to say they would help or support me. Thanks, guys. All Might and I decided to tell you the other secret that we were planning to wait on. However, I need to warn you that the secret that I want to tell you is one that has been painted in BLD and has gotten people killed. As such, if you are not willing to have a normal life and are willing to stick with me through far more danger than any typical pro hero will face then please leave the room. I looked around after saying this and Lucas and Alex get up and pull me to sit on the couch with them while hugging me. They swore to me that they would never leave me and no matter the danger, they will not leave now. The girls just look at me and say, Izuku, you are a part of this group and more or less lead it now. We trust you and will always stick by your side no matter what. We want to be some of the strongest heroes ever, so running away from danger now would be stupid of us. Skylar, Sophia, and Rose said. Well, let's first start off with the fact that you all know my past yes. I asked. They all confirm that they know that I grew up quirkless and my quirk came in late. Well, everything I've told you is true beside the fact that my quirk never did come in. Once I said this, my friends looked confused so I started to explain the story of OFA and AFO and how All Might was the TH user who was also quirkless who decided to give me the quirk. So, just to summary this up. You are naturally born quirkless who received a quirk from All Might who was also quirkless. Your quirk is called one for all but is registered as superpower so the real name doesn't get out. You have a roughly year-old monster that has killed any user of your quirk and gave All Might his current form. AFO didn't die like All Might thought and has started to return. This means that if All Might cannot defeat AFO the next time or All Might hit his limits and retires, it will be your job to go have a death match with AFO as the TH user. Lucas asked while staring at me. I got kind of worried about how no one was talking besides what he just said. Yes that would be correct, I said. They all flipped out in shock. Little son, what the hell is your life? Alex said while Lucas just facebombed himself. The girls were still stuck in a state of shock while All Might was sitting off to the side with my parents. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to be involved with me any, I got cut off by Lucas and Alex both holding my mouth shut and them trading with me. Never assume we will ever stop being in your life little son. Never. Lucas stated while me. Alex pulled me into his lap and started to embrace the back of my neck and said, we told you we will stay with you no matter what. Now we know the truth of your quirk and can help you when the time comes. Also, you have a better chance with the healing abilities that the soulmate marks give you as well. I was so happy that they didn't run away from me in fear that I started tearing up. Little son, please don't cry. Lucas and Alex kept repeating while hugging me. The girls snapped out of their shock and jumped onto us. Izuku you are the leader of our group. We won't leave you now. You're stuck with us just like you are stuck with the two idiots. The girls yelled while getting a protest from my lovers about being called idiots. Izuku. Everyone. Alex and Lucas said at the same time. It's weird how they can always speak at the same time and say the same thing I thought. Since Izuku has a large burden on him, that just means we need to pull some of that burden onto our shoulders and help him. Once the tournament is over we need to increase our training. AUA allows second years to attempt for the full hero license if they believe they are strong enough and have top marks in all their classes. Alex said with Lucas following up by saying, indeed, as such, we need a name for our group that everyone will call us. We could turn it into a hero agency name in the future since I doubt we would separate even after we all graduate school. At least I know Izuku, Alex, and I wouldn't be. 
The girls agreed with the idea of starting an agency after graduation and started thinking of hero names. I started thinking about a hero name as well. It would play into my hero name as well. Guys, I may have an idea for a name we can use as our group name and agency name. Everyone turned to me when I said that, even my family. I think we could use the name Vanguard for both group and agency names. It would play into my hero name, Hero of Hope, the Paragon. I said. Everyone started thinking about and then All Might started to speak. I think that is an amazing name. People could reference your group in multiple ways that way. Such as the Vanguard, the Paragon's Vanguard. The Vanguard would represent the fact that Izuku and you all would be leading the next generation in new ideas and into the battlefield due to your power as a whole group. The Paragon's Vanguard would represent the fact that Izuku is your leader and you all support him and help him as a unit. As such, it would be an amazing name to take for both your group name and agency name in the future. All Might stated then and everyone looked shocked because it made perfect sense. As such, it was decided from that day forth they would become the vanguard led by Paragon. Now they just had to deal with the tournament tomorrow and show off the new vanguard to the world. Today is the day that Izuku and the vanguard take aim at all of the top spots of the championship for the AUA tournament. This tournament is a battle that happens across all years. First, they start with a bracket system for each school year, and then they have the top from each year go into battle against each other. However, it isn't a standard tournament. Once it hits the year versus year matches it turns into a ranking challenge system where anyone that made it to the year versus year battle can challenge anyone they want and if you are defeated you are out of the battle. The more battles you win before you are defeated the higher rank you are. Izuku and the rest of his class are waiting to be called out to the field with their year so that their battles may start. Izuku and the Vanguard believe that they will make it to the year versus year battles and will be aiming to take the top ranks for the entire school. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to AUA's annual tournament. Yelled the announcer. Now, I'm sure you students know how this goes, but just to ensure everyone remembers. This event has been closed to only invited guests and the families of the students. As such, at the end of the event, we will compile everything we recorded into videos for pro heroes to use to scout you for internship offers. Let us kick this off with the first years. Class A and B please make your way out to the seating area near the ring. Stated the announcer. Class B did have some interesting opponents due to quirks that ended up costing some a students their matches. However, the vanguard group swept through all of their matches. Even in Izuka's match, he only used percent of his quirk to air blast his opponent out of the ring. His opponent had a quirk that made them bigger like Empty Lady in Japan. However, the bigger they are the harder they fall. Izuku just air blasted one leg from under the person and they fell out of the ring. Most of the vanguard matches didn't require much effort to be put in at all. As such, it ended up being only the vanguard left fighting each other. Izuku vs Rose Skyler vs Alex Lucas vs Sophia. The matches all turned in the favor of the boys since they were the stronger members of the group. This caused Rose, Skyler, and Sophia to have a way match against each other with Sophia placing TH, Skyler TH, and Rose TH. After their matches were finished, it was time for the final match of the first year students. Izuku vs Alex vs Lucas. Izuku did have some trouble since Alex and Lucas both double teamed him since they knew he could pick them off one by one if they let him do to OFA and float. However, when Lucas used a large wall of fire it caused them to lose sight of Izuku for a few moments. This allowed Izuku to up his OFA percent to his current max of percent and used the float quirk to speed around the firewall and get up close to Alex who was half transformed into a dragon. Izuku knew both boys could take a higher percent hit of OFA. As such, Izuku hit Alex with a kick to the side and sent Alex flying out of the ring before he could stabilize himself with his dragon flying abilities. This left Izuku and Lucas remaining on the field. Izuku decided to end the fight by stealing one of All Might's move and caused it to rain heavily. This allowed Izuku a few seconds where Lucas had to readjust his flame's strength to deal with the water. However, Izuka got up close by kicking off the ground and kneed Lucas in the stomach which caused him to fly out of the ring. 
This resulted in the final positions for the first years being Sophia placing TH, Skylar TH, and Rose TH, Alex RD, Lucas ND, and Izuku Street. All of the families in attendance cheered at the end of the match and the first years cleared the stage so the second years could get ready for their matches. Izuka got worried he had hit his lovers too strong since they were clutching their sides and stomach where Izuku had hit them. Lucas, Alex are you two alright? I didn't hit too strong did I? I'm sorry. Izuku said while starting to tear up a bit. We're fine little Sunday. It only left some big bruises that will be healed by the nurses in a few moments. Lucas said. Indeed little son, don't worry about it. If we don't go all out against each other then we can never improve, stated Alex. Izuka calmed down after hearing this and leaned between the both of them and each of them on the cheeks while they waited for the nurses to come to their class waiting room. Vanguard family POV, well, I would say Izuka sure is strong now. He took effective measures to end his matches quickly. The other members of Vanguard also acted quickly and efficiently in their matches as well. All Might said while other parents were agreeing. They were all happy that their kids would move on to the year versus year battles. Do you think the kids will perform as well in the year versus year matches? asked some of the parents. All Might believed that they would and that there is a good chance that they could end up taking the entire ranking system top spots. However, All Might did admit he doesn't know much about the other years since he has been focused on the Vanguard only. I think they stand a good chance at taking the top spots All Might, said Principal Victor who came up to join the parents in the Vanguard private room. So, I've been hearing you refer to them as the Vanguard. Did they decide to call themselves that or did someone else come up with it, asked Victor. The parents told him about the children's plan to turn their group into an agency when they graduate and that they plan to try for a full hero exam in their second year. They also informed him about the entire Paragon and Vanguard theme that they are going with. The principal was interested in this new development. He knew Izuku was leading the group of friends more and more but he didn't know that they already recognized him as their head leader for the group. Victor decided to watch the Vanguard group more through this exam and see if he could pull any strings on getting them an internship with an agency that could teach them more skills that are suited for teams like the Vanguard so they know how to fight together but also alone if needed. Time skipped to year versus year battles, RD POV, Lucas and Alex were snugging with Izuku while waiting to be called for the next stage of the tournament. If anyone were to see the scene they would see that Lucas and Alex are both whipped by Izuku without him even trying. Lucas was feeding Izuku some grapes and Alex was rubbing Izuku's hands. The three girls who were all in the room were just giggling at their friends due to the fact that Lucas and Alex willing to make themselves whipped and will pamper Izuku without Izuku even asking for anything. Izuku knew he was extremely pampered by his lovers and was so thankful for them coming into his life. Lucas, Alex. I really love you guys. I'm thankful for everything you two do for me even when I don't ask for things. You two always make sure I'm comfortable and happy. Izuku said while planting on their lips. No problem little son. Lucas said with Alex saying, we will pamper you until you get sick of it. Everyone laughed at this. Will all of our first, second, and third year winners come out to the field? We will be starting in a few moments. Yelled the announcer. Well looks like it's time to go. Let us take home the top rank my vanguard. Yelled Izuku. Izuku marched outside with his vanguard on his heels. It was truly a tight-knit unit that would follow their paragon into any battle. Ladies and gentlemen. We are now starting our ranked tournament. The way this works is that the first years may challenge any of the upper years. If they win, they take that person's rank. The third year students have the top six spots followed by the second years and then the first years. You may only challenge someone above your rank. If you are defeated you drop down to that person's rank. You can only challenge once more after you are defeated. If you lose again then you are out. We will keep going until we have everyone knocked out into their ranks or we have no more challengers. Yelled the announcer. The first person that was allowed to challenge was Sophia since she ranked the lowest due to taking TH in the first years. I challenge third year rank, yelled Sophia. 
Sophia knew that she was currently a bad matchup for most of the third years except the TH and TH rank people. Sophia used a subtle illusion as she entered the ring and made it seem like she was a few feet further ahead than she really was. This allowed her to dodge opponents' hits since they were throwing them based on the illusion and not where she really was. Sophia ended up winning by using her wings to KOing her opponent. These types of fights kept happening with each of the Vanguard group. Each of them took their respective ranks with Sophia ranking TH, Skylar TH, Rose TH, Alex RD, Lucas ND, and Izuka Street. Then came the second-year students who watched the Vanguard challenge all of the third-year students and win. Several of them knew that they stood no chance at taking the top spots. As such, they only challenged within their respective year with some of them changing ranks. However, one second year decided to risk it all because he was that a first year was ranked first. I challenged the first ranker Izuku Midoriya, yelled the idiot second year who was ranked TH currently. The second year entered the ring with Izuku and started to talk SHT about Izuku and his friends. First years should know their place and stay where you belong. Under our feet, stated the second year student. This sent some shocks through the crowd of parents and guests. Vanguard family and Victor POV, did that second year really just say that, asked All Might. Others confirmed for him that is what he said. That is disappointing. I know some of our students have a bit more pride and egos due to attending this school but that just isn't acceptable. It seems like I will need to have a conversation with the student after the event. Principal Victor stated. Then the situation devolved. The second year started to insult Izuku's sexuality and his lovers. Well, that second year is really close to courting his death. Izuku has been holding back in his power. He has only really gone all out against Lucas and Alex and has only used dash percent against the other people, stated Hisashi. I just hope Izuku doesn't kill him in his pissed off state, said All Might while praying for the second year to walk out of the ring alive. Izuku just looked completely off once the second year got finished talking. You know, I've been holding back while fighting people outside my friends this entire time, said Izuku, yeah, so what? You're still weak and so are your friends, yelled the student. Well, I hope you survive this, stated Izuku as he kicked off the ground slightly and started to float high in the air. This surprised everyone that didn't know he could do this. This is because he has been hiding it through OFA so people didn't know about it. Instead, now he is outright using it just to float high in the air while looking down on the second year. What the hell? Come down and fight me, yelled the second year. That is the thing though. In the real world, villains don't play fair and why would any opponent come down to fight when they can do it from the safety of the air, said Izuku as he pulled his arm back and charged his body with his max percent. Izuku then punched forwards which sent a large gust of wind down onto the second year student which threw him up in the air because Izuku had created a small tornado due to the angle he hit combined with the walls of the stadium to create a vortex of air. All of the people around the stadium were wondering if they just saw that correctly. The first year student had created a damn mini tornado. They were surprised when he caused it to rain, but now he is making tornadoes. Ahaha. That's my boy. He is starting to get some experience in changing the weather. I remember when I used to do that when I was young to put out fires or cause large groups of villains to be blown away off their feet. Said All Might. The Vanguard family was just laughing at the second year that got blown away. Well, looks like the student got some punishment and humiliated as well, Victor said. Izuku POV, after the threw the idiot out of the ring by creating a tornado, I just walked back to my sitting area and hugged Lucas and Alex since the idiot put me in a bad mood. Little son, good job at putting the idiot down, said Lucas while Alex was just laughing at the idiot the second year. My mood changed back to being happy since I could have my lovers hugging me. This was until the second year came charging over at us with his quirk activated yelling slurs at us and telling us to die. The entire stadium guest and parents came to a standstill since they couldn't believe what this student was attempting to do. However, he picked the wrong damn people to fight as my entire vanguard got up and had him pinned to the ground within seconds. Alex had half transformed into a dragon and had his tail wrapped around the guy's neck while Lucas created a fire WHP that was around one of his legs. 
Skylar had weapons made of light pointed at the guy's stomach with Sophia doing the same with her dark created weapons. Rose however had her hand coated in lighting prepared to strike him in the back. Everyone was standing still as the second year just paled due to how fast Izuku's friends moved to counter him. Izuku didn't even have to move before his friends jumped at the guy. I slowly turned around and looked at the guy in the eye and said the following, you want to be a hero, yet you act like a criminal once you lost a tournament. Do you have no honor or shame? You are a disappointment to AUA and its reputation. This caused the student to have a sad and guilty looking expression on his face. I then saw the principal was running over to us so I called out to my group and said Vanguard stand down. This caused all of my group to jump away and fall in line behind me just as the principal arrived with several teachers. What the hell were you thinking? Principal Victor yelled at the second year student. From this point forward, you are disqualified from the event and expelled from this school. We will not tolerate this type of action, stated the principal. However, Izuku had a bleeding heart. None of the Vanguard members were hurt and Izuku believed that the student wasn't too far gone to be turned around. If he was expelled he might not learn anything and end up becoming a villain. Thought Izuku. Principal Victor, I would like to request some mercy for. This student, I said shocking everyone except my vanguard who knew I had a bleeding heart for most people. This shocked everyone in the stadium since Izuku's mic was still hot and could be heard by everyone. The principal just looked shocked and had no idea why Izuku would do this. He knew Izuku had a bleeding heart for most people but this student insulted him and attempted to harm him. I believe he has started to reflect on his actions based on his body language. I believe he can be turned around still and improve. I'm not asking for him not to be punished since that can't happen. I'm however recommend he be put on probation and taken on by one of the stricter teachers. If he doesn't improve then the school could remove him then since he would have been given a chance. I said as everyone was inspired by my mercy and belief that he can see change. The student looked at me and just kept thanking me since the principal decided to follow my request. Make no mistake, I'm not asking you to change your beliefs on same SEC parents or anything like that. However, I am asking you that when it comes to being a hero, you need to learn to put that aside and focuses on protecting everyone and stopping the villains because you would be required to save everyone even if they stand against your personal beliefs. This made the student go silent in thinking as he was guided away by the principal. Soon we got back on track for the tournament as more people attempted to challenge us. However, they all failed to defeat us and had to bow out of the event. Soon we were left with just the vanguard left that had the ability to challenge anyone. Sophia challenged Skylar and won. Skylar still had one more chance to rank higher. As such, she challenged Rose Rose but lost. Sophia attempted to challenge Rose but lost as well. Rose has gotten better at controlling the air around her. As such, she pulled away from any air around Sophia making her blackout. This left Skylar in TH, Sophia in TH, Rose in TH since Rose knew she didn't have much chance at taking any of the boys from the vanguard due to their basic speed. This would allow the boys to get close to her before she could do much against them. With that, Alex had the right to challenge next. He decided to challenge Lucas to a fight which caused some destruction. Both boys got permission from the principal to move their fight out of the ring into one of the training grounds since they had planned to transform. This left the training grounds burned to the ground with some of the ground turning into molten lava due to the heat that both boys could put off with their fire if pushed to the extremes. Both boys ended up tying due to running out of stamina and couldn't really move afterward. Lucas decided not to try and challenge me since he didn't think he could win by himself in his current state. I knew this and had asked the principal to do a special round. RDPOV, ladies and gentlemen we have arrived at our final ranks. The first year students have taken the top ranks for the entire school. We have Skylar at TH, Sophia TH, Rose TH, Lucas and Alex tied for ND, and we have Izuku in the first place rank who went unchallenged. However, this year we'll have one more event. By special request of our first ranker Izuku. The top individuals will be fighting against a team of pros, stated the announcer. The vanguard was shocked that Izuku had asked for something like this but was happy as well. 
They had spent weeks working on team battle tactics during their training and wanted to put it to the test. The team battle event was pushed for minutes to allow the vanguard time to be healed and given energy via an energy transfer quirk. This allowed them all to be in top shape for the next event. Soon they were called back out but were told the battle would take place in another training ground. This training ground with the cityscape battleground. Welcome everyone to the final event. Today we have the top students who go by the group name Vanguard. Typically the students would select hero names after the tournament for internships. However, these students have names selected already. Please give it up to the Vanguard members, Dragon, Alex, Phoenix, Lucas, Dove, Skylar, Storm, Rose, Azrael, Sophia, and the leader of the Vanguard is the Paragon, Izuku. Give it up for the Paragon and his Vanguard, stated the announcer as the crowd went wild at their names being called. Today Paragon and his Vanguard will be going up against a group of pro heroes who have agreed to take part in this. We have the hashtag Hero Robin, hashtag Hero Vector, hashtag Hero Spine, hashtag Hero Tear, hashtag Hero June, and lastly hashtag Hero Solar. Each of these heroes belongs in the top heroes of America. These heroes routinely team up for missions and will give our Vanguard team a run for their money against heroes who has experience fighting together. Let us see how they do. Yelled the announcer. The Vanguard knew this was going to be a tough fight but they wanted to see where they stood in regards to their teamwork in a real battle. This was the best chance without risking their lives out in the field. As they expected, the fight was tough and painful. The Vanguard was able to knock out hashtag, hashtag, and hashtag before falling back to plan again. However, when they launched another assault, they had taken out hashtag but lost Storm and Dove since the hashtag and hashtag were far stronger than the other heroes. They were able to break up out tactics and take Storm and Dove out. This lead to us overreacting and resulted in us losing Azrael as well. The fight came down to Dragon, Phoenix, and Paragon versus hashtag Hero Tear and hashtag Hero Robin. Dragon decided to fully transform while Phoenix attempted to flood the area tier and Robin was in with fire. Paragon moved into the sky and singled to his teammates that he was going to create a vortex with the fire that Phoenix laid down. Paragon powered up and created a vortex which caused everything inside to heat up at a fast rate. This forced the heroes out of hiding and forced them to come charging at Paragon. Dragon and Phoenix attacked Robin together who was holding them off quite well while Paragon and Tyr faced off. Each battle lasted for roughly minutes each. Dragon and Phoenix were able to defeat Robin but were not really in any state to help Paragon. Though he didn't really need help. Though the battle was a difficult one due to Paragon's lack of experience he was able to stand against the hashtag hero in power alone and was slightly overpowering him. Soon Paragon pushed his power output from his percent limit to percent which did cause his body to strain but gave him the power he needed to knock the hero down and pin him to the ground forcing the hero to surrender. The Vanguard wins. The Vanguard wins. With Paragon, Dragon, and Phoenix remaining in, the Vanguards have won. What power? What spurt? What determination? Guests and heroes, please give a round of applause for the future generation of heroes the Paragon and his vanguard. Screamed the announcer as the event came to an end. The heroes that the vanguard fought asked to talk for a few minutes before everyone was dismissed to go home since the event had come to an end. They congratulated the vanguard and pointed out the mistakes that they made during the fight and how to improve their teamwork. Soon everyone was dismissed and went to find their families. Izuku and the Vanguard were happy with the results of the event since they showed off their powers as individuals and as a unit. The rest of the Vanguard decided that they would start moving into the Midoriya's home with Izuku so that they could all spend more time together and get better as a unit. As such, the girls went to their homes and started to plan and pack their things for when they move in a few days. While Izuku had other plans for the night with his two lovers. Izuku wanted to show how happy he was with them being in his life and wanted to let them enjoy themselves. I hope they like the present I got them for tonight thought Izuku shyly. I've talked to Lucas and have been trying to figure out why Izuku has been acting very shy tonight. He started acting this way after we left the tournament and Lucas and I are worried if we did something to make him uncomfortable around us. 
We haven't done anything out of the normal for our relationship though. It has been the typical cuddling, hugging, making out, flirting, and bathing together. Nothing overly SXL since Lucas and I didn't want to push him into something that he might not be comfortable with within the current stage of our relationship. But I would be proven wrong soon on how comfortable he is with us. Lucas POV, Alex and I have been talking and we haven't figured out what happened to make Izuku so shy around us again. I did hear Inko say something about how the package he ordered arrived earlier in the day and is waiting for him in their room. I wonder if that has anything to do with it but Izuku started being shy since the end of the tournament though. Izuku POV, after we got done eating, Lucas, Alex, and I went down to the in-home theater and watched some movies for a few hours. I was really getting shy and nervous since I had planned a special night with them and they don't know what I'm about to do. I'm really nervous that I will screw something up and embarrass myself in front of them. I had warned mom to keep anyone out of my detached living house tonight since I wanted privacy and I think she realized what I was planning to do since she whispered something about grandbabies in the future I'm refusing to have a kid this soon but my mother wouldn't listen anyway when she gets like that. My lovers and I started to head back over to our shared room for the night and relax. I rushed ahead a bit and grabbed the package and slipped into the bathroom just as they came in. They looked at me like they were worried. I'll be out in a second. Just let me do something okay. I said and they nodded. RDPOV, Lucas and Alex went over to sit on the couch on the other side of the room. I wonder what he is doing. Thought both of them. While they were sitting down and wondering what Izuku was doing. Izuku himself was in the bathroom changing clothes. He decided to give his lovers a present and he hoped they liked it. He finished changing clothes and peeked his head out the door and told them to close the blinds which they did. Once they turned towards him, he asked them to stand in the middle of the room and close their eyes. Izuku watched as they stood in the middle of the room with their eyes closed. When he saw that they were ready he stepped out of the bathroom and locked the bedroom door so no one can enter. He moved over towards the bed and positioned himself on the bed. He then told his lovers to open their eyes and they saw him wearing a bunny suit and that he positioned on the bed. W what do you think L loves, asked Izuku while stuttering and blushing, W what do you think L loves, asked Izuku while stuttering and blushing. I tried to get clothes that would fit the colors of my dragon and phoenix lovers. Do you like the present I got you? Izuku asked. Lucas and Alex were shocked. They both could feel themselves getting strong down below and wanted to jump Izuku right where he was but they wanted to make sure he was ready for them. They didn't want to push too fast and wanted to go at Izuku's pace. Little son, we love our present. Are we allowed to eat our present tonight? asked Lucas in a flirty tone. This made Izuku blush even more across his body. Why yes. I wanted to give you two a present and reward for doing so well my dragon and phoenix. So please enjoy yourself my loves. Izuku said. Alex then moved up to Izuku and pushed Izuku slowly down onto the bed. With pleasure our little son, but it won't be just us enjoying pleasure tonight, said Alex while running his hand down Izuku's thighs. Izuku could feel himself getting strong and he noticed that his lovers were strong already. Both Lucas and Alex got on a side of Izuku and started to run their hands across Izuku's body. They started to slowly embrace his body leaving hickeys across it. Lucas went down to Izuku's legs and started to pull the leg stockings and boots off Izuku while Alex was slowly working on the vest buttons with his mouth. Soon Izuku was left in the shorts with the tail attached, the rabbit ears left on, and the bow tie left around his neck. You are a pretty little rabbit aren't you little son, whispered Lucas in Izuku's ear. This caused Izuku to mmmm a bit and started to ask them to run their hands across his body again. They complied and started to rub their hands up and down Izuku's chest and nipples. While doing this Lucas and Alex took each other's shirts and off performing a small striptease for Izuku which left them in their boxers. Izuku sat there with his lovers running their hands across his body as he admired his fiancés. They looked like they were made by Greek gods. Can we keep going little son? Remember if we do something you don't like please tell us so we can stop, said Lucas with a serious tone. Yes, please keep going. Izuku. 
This made Lucas and Alex start their assault on Azuka's body by leaving any more bite marks and hickeys across it. Alex moved behind Izuku and picked him up into his lap where Alex started to dry hump Izuku while Lucas moved in front of Izuku and had Alex lay down with Izuku on top of him. Lucas then started to dry hump Izuku from the front. Izuku was in so much pleasure. His lovers were taking it slowly from moving from one thing to another so that he could get comfortable with what they were doing. He loved how they knew him so well and made him feel so much pleasure. Little son, we're going to remove all of our short slash underwear off now okay, asked Alex as he Izuku's neck. Izuku just nodded his head to this as Lucas pulled Izuku's lower half in the air a bit so he could remove Alex's boxers for him since he was under Izuku. Then Lucas removed his own and then removed Izuku's shorts and boxers off. This left them all completely NDE with Izuku still having the bow tie and bunny ears left on him. All three of them started to rub against each other naked as Lucas started his way down Izuku's body to his pages. Lucas started to pleasure Izuku's lower half of his body while Alex turned Izuku's head around to make out with him. Alex then grabbed some lube that Izuku had placed on the side table when he came out of the bathroom and started to prepare Izuku's but as he still made out with Izuku. Lucas, please lay down on the bed, Izuku asked. Lucas complied as Izuku moved off Alex's lap and positioned himself above Lucas with them both facing each other's gentles. Alex then moved to behind Izuku and kept preparing him as Izuku Lucas started to SCK Izuku again as Lucas and Alex both watch Izuku start pleasing Lucas by starting to SCK Lucas off. Alex soon finished preparing Izuku and warned him that he was going to enter. Little son, you are so tight. God, I love you little son. Alex said as he started to slowly move in and out of Izuku which caused him to mm -mm. Lucas soon moved out from under Izuku and got in front of him and had Izuku's mouth placed on his pages. They both started to speed up as they both started to hammer Izuku's holes. They were all in pleasure as they came. They decided to SWCH positions so Lucas could enter Izuku as well. They kept places and positions for several more rounds. Soon they even both double penetrated Izuku with them going as slow as they can so they don't harm Izuku. I am going to be so sore in the morning thought Izuku. However, he was in too much pleasure to care at the current point. The three boys kept for a few more rounds before Izuku collapsed on the bed. At this point, Lucas and Alex were also tired as well and decide to stop. Lucas went off to the bathroom to prepare a soothing bath for them. Lucas went off to the bathroom to prepare a soothing bath for them Izuku POV, I am so tired. Lucas went off to run a bath I think. I am going to need to be carried since there is no way I'm walking anytime soon I thought. Alex moved on my side and shifted me into his arms. It always amazing how much they can lift even though I have more muscles than they do. Just relax little son, we will take care of you. Alex cooed in my ear. I just whimpered into his neck since my body was so sore. Soon we arrived in the bathroom where I saw Lucas in his full glory just had finished filling the tub with warm water. Our little son, how are you feeling? Lucas asked. I just whimpered again and groaned out, sore, to them. They rubbed my back and started to move us all into the tub. Alex was still carrying me as he started to sit down in the tub with me still in his arms. Lucas came and sat down in front of Alex and put his legs under me so I was sitting basically in both of their laps with them pulling in very close to me with them basically still lifting me while I was floating in the tub due to their arm strength. It felt nice. They pampered me by cleaning me up and took care of any hygiene problems that I would have needed to be taken care of. Soon we got done and at one point I started to fall asleep so they decided to move us all back to the bed after Lucas changed the sheets. Alex laid me down on the bed after they dried me off. We didn't get changed into any clothes and just went to bed NDE since we've already f each other. No point in getting dressed since we passed that point already since getting dressed took too much effort.